You're listening to the Cantina Cast. Your home for thought provoking Star Wars talk. Join Adler and Jonesy in breaking down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cantina Cast. My name is Albert Padilla, and this is a special episode, a bonus episode, if you will, of the Cantina Cast, where tonight I'm joined by Jonesy and a special guest. And we are going to open up a ton of Star Wars Unlimited cards. This is the most recent card game, card collecting game that's come out. I've invested a lot of money in my retirement and my children's college funds are dependent upon the success of these uh, packs being open tonight. So with that in mind, I'm going to bring on our first person. You all know and love him. He's with us every time. Jonesy, welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight? You know, it's funny. You have uh, you, you have the rip cam that's coming up here. Yeah. And when we first announced this game, I believe I said Star Wars Unlimited is going to be how they view your wallet. It's yeah. going to be unlimited funds. And they are ripping your wallet to shreds is basically they what they're doing. ripped it already to shreds. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, just how much I spent on this stupid game. <laughs> in just a little bit uh but joining us uh, we've got again a very special guest tonight we, he, we've known him for quite some time in fact uh, we've met up with him i think at least twice at star wars celebration i think you've been on his show at least once if i'm not mistaken yep. uh great friend of ours uh, the nicest guy in the freaking world please welcome greg from rebel base card podcast uh greg it's an honor to finally have you here man welcome how are you doing good good i just have a question for you which child has given has been given a speech what do you think about vocational school <laughs> yeah uh, the military sounds really good right now doesn't it junior I'm so i'm telling you i'm telling you nothing wrong wonder. with the military but you know i don't have a lot of money so uh hey so thanks for being here like this is kind of in your wheelhouse if i'm not mistaken and uh i thought man we've this we've been looking for an opportunity to get you on and this was like the golden opportunity quite honestly so Thanks again for being here, and I'm excited to to you know, break bread with you, almost uh, so to speak, on the show tonight. No, it's it's fantastic, and you know, whenever I hear someone talk about you know ripping cards or talking about cards, of course I perk up, you know, and you're kind of like sticking your head out of like you know like the the dirt, like hmm, what what? Um, yeah. But it's a game that you know it's a game I was very interested in anyway, and I was gonna you know, do a little investing, maybe not as far as you guys have done. Um, but you know, having played destiny before and tried my hand at the old, you know, CCG from way back in the nineties and have a few of those, it was kind of fun to see what this iteration would be. And, you know, it comes at a time I'm telling you, uh, there hasn't been a new tops product for star Wars announced yet this year. We know there's going to be some, so unlimited finds itself having a great audience of folks who are ready and willing to check out new cards, new artwork. And I've got apparently some money or college well. funds. Uh, I hope we have the 401k cam somewhere yeah. uh, to kind of show just how much of a dip. But um, there is some value in there. And I'll be curious what you pull and what you show. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have some thoughts, but I, I am curious what we're going to see and excited to talk about Unlimited. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for that quick introduction. And what we'll do is, uh, Jonesy, I'm going to turn it over to you just to give our, our, our Patreon thanks, as we always do on our show. Uh, and then just kind of the show format. So uh, I'm going to ask Greg. We're going to have Greg kind of talk about his podcast, his experience with card collecting. Uh, at that point, I'll start opening uh, packs and stuff if I'm not already, honestly, because we've got a lot of cards here. I don't think we're going to get through all these cards, quite honestly, unless I'm just ripping and looking for the hollows, right? Uh, but at some point, then, we are going to run Greg through our Force Lightning Round questions, which we've uh, is, has been a tradition here anytime we bring guests on. So that'll be how we wrap up the show. So, uh, Jonesy, I'll turn it over to you. And I think I'm going to go on mute. I'm going to start pre-wrapping or pre-unwrapping because I know the shrink wrap is going to be uh, kind of loud. <laughs> yeah. So again, so uh, thanks to all of our Patreon members, now part of the tribe, Danny, Rob, Mike, Lauren, Dante, Riss, Justin, Jackson, Chuck, Mandan, Daz, Isabella, Uncle Leon, Josh, Jacob, and Rita Reborn. And then, of course, our Delusions Grand members, Rod, CJ, Alex, Steve, and Daz. Thank you all so much. If you're curious about Patreon, cantinacast.com slash Patreon is where you can find us. Uh, you're not listening to this. You're watching this. This is just a YouTube only kind of exclusive. So this is a this is pretty exciting. So, Greg, we're excited to have you here and join up with us, and as well as the people in the live stream, JJ Skywalker, Steph, and Vader's Girl. Kara, thanks for coming out. Go support uh, Vader Girl's channel as well if you like puzzles and Star Wars conversation. She's fantastic. And, of course, Steph over there, one hell of a fanfic. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm excited about this. So I'm, I don't have any of the – I haven't bought any Star Wars Unlimited, but I love, I love collectible card games. I love art in general, and I love – 
hard art. And Greg, we've talked a lot about this. And when we were up in, in uh, for Star Wars fan days or Star Wars days, whatever it was called, and we were able to walk around and meet some folks. And uh, how long have you been doing this for? Like, how long have you been collecting cards in a more serious manner? Or has this just been a, a lifelong, you know, love of yours? I'd say, you know, it goes back to, it goes back to the seventies with, a, a, you know, like with a new hope when it comes out. And I remember, you know, we had one pharmacy in our town. There's like, we have one traffic light and one little like drugstore. And, you know, I think my card collecting starts back in the, in the seventies with these, I got right near the end of this series. And that started a, a love of collecting, not just, you know, like with this, but with baseball as well, or anything that came out, everything from like, you know, uh, actually, even going back a little further, somehow I had King Kong, but I'm like, you know, Close Encounter, oh, wow. Galactica, you know, mm -hmm. Tron, baseball, um, a, a lot of this stuff. And, you know, I think on and off through like the 80s and you get to mid 80s, comics start coming in. So I kind of like dumped a lot of my my baseball stuff off, got into comics real heavy. But then I always kind of kind of filtered back to, you know, baseball cards. And that time, late 80s, it wasn't until 93 when. The first galaxy sets when you know after return of the jedi tops kind of comes back with star wars cards but by then i leave the country so i'm on the other side of the planet uh for a lot of those great 90s sets which i'm kind of you know getting back into now and you know for example like a lot of the the, the wide screens and things that come out in the mid 90s right uh so it's not really until 20 like i was collecting i, I started collecting back when the force awakens journey to in 2015 that kind of like you started seeing these hanger boxes and packs in target and walmart they look like the old starfield they kind of sucked me back in and i was really collecting you know heavy and hard retail i just got by blaster box after blaster box and then a couple years later you know like, i i kind of started wanting to get the itch to kind of do something and unfortunately you know like i i worked at apple so i couldn't talk about tech so i started wanting to kind of talk about um cards and it wasn't really until celebration came to chicago fast forward when i bought my celebration ticket for chicago i'm like all right i'm back in and really i took those months leading up to from january to april to kind of start getting the wheels in motion get some demo podcasts out get the instagram instagram channel going and really you know what i what i always say to thank you and i know we got a long long show i don't want to drown this out but you know my community experience although like doing some tests at C2E2, talking to a couple of artists. It's really with celebration. It's meeting you guys at that breakfast that you had in Chicago that really, you know, kind of like showed me like how welcoming this community was. You guys had been out, you've been around, I'd listened to you and everybody's just like, Hey, no, this is cool. You're doing something. And I'm like, yeah, I've got a show. I'm, I'm like seven or eight episodes deep. Um, <laughs> but it didn't matter. And you just yeah. like, and then, you know, once you got to celebration, that was my one day. That was when, you know, people there were people i was supposed to meet but then you start seeing all this all the different communities the cosplayers the groups the state all that and then and you go man this is this is for real and so that's just kind of where it started from there and thankfully we've talked a lot about cards we've talked a lot about you know cosplayers creators whatever you got and then you know a few years ago um uh, greg cast from ioncannon.com you know, I had him on the show just as a guest because he'd done a really cool, you know, Joseph Campbell thing for YouTube since he was a professor. We started trying to do like a kind of our version of a recap show. And there are a million of them out there. But we just kind of said, you know what? We don't know everything. Uh, we're just going to trade questions. And we started with Bad Batch, you know, season one. And we're wrapping up, you know, season three right now. But it's been that kind of fun because mm -hmm. it kind of gives you a little another dimension. It allows us to, it allows me to kind of play in that world like, what I love about the Cantina cast is that you can go in depth, comprehensive, right? You, two hours on a trailer. You can guys can dive in it. Books, you know, you can, uh, you know, Lauren helps if you're doing like a dive into a book, or you can do comics, or you can do all this. So you can really get that. You really feel like after a Cantina cast, you've really got, you know, you've really had a full meal. But with us, it's kind of like we can kind of do that, and we can add to the conversation without necessarily going into places where we just don't really know. Um, except with this last one. Uh, we were doing what episode 12 juggernaut where somehow we managed to do the longest one of every one of like, I'm following it. It was like almost two hours long. I don't know how we pulled that off. And I mean, you know, it was how, just one of the, I don't know how Greg cast survived <laughs> by the end. Everybody was just like, but you know, I think it's one of those where every time you watch something new, there's what you go kind of go into with your expectations is what you go out. And then we often have guests come on Jonesy. You've been on where we've kind of traded questions and whatnot. And sometimes you just go, I just need to hash this out. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I, I know a lot of great people. And you know, we've just had 
you know, guest after guest that can kind of bring that. And in that one, it just happened to go, we had Anthony King from Force Ghost Conversations and it just went on. And I was trying to think of like, you know, Hudson Hawk. I won't talk about Hudson Hawk here. I mean, I, I did not enough of that, but it's sort of like a common, you know, like where you had expectations of and go, did, I, did they, did I get filled? But, you know, you don't want to be one of those shows. And, and I always love it where you guys talk about like, you know, uh, no filler and everything means something. And, you know, you just don't want to, we don't want to be one of those where it's just like, there's so many people out there that are just putting out stuff just for clicks. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can have some fun, if you can be entertaining, um, if you got the gift for gab, guilty, um, then it can be fun. And I think especially <laughs> you guys hit 10 years, you know, we hit, I hit five in March. Um, I think the, you, yeah. the longer you do it, the fun you're hoping people come along for the ride, you know, show up for the cards, maybe show up for some of the non card stuff, you know, and, you know, and you just kind of follow along and experience and Jonesy, you've been up here. We have some things that happen here and it's really great with Joliet and C2E2 and all that. So at any rate, but it's, I, it's a pleasure to talk to both of you. It's, I, it's I desperately want to get up for C2E2 because it's, it looks like it's such a huge event and it's so, it seems like it's really popular. It's just getting massive and every year it seems to grow and it looks like just so much fun. It's huge. And it's a McCormick place. So it's like, it's where celebration Chicago was, you know, right. we do have some others that happen in Rosemont, but um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that was a great place. Um, so why don't we do this? Uh, and, and we'll, pl we'll plug the show, I'll put it in the show notes and all that as well uh, at some point here. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to just briefly kind of tee you guys up for a conversation. I think that would be with, and I'll chime in as much as I can, but I kind of want to just talk about all the star Wars card collecting games. And there have been a few number of them. I think my first one that I came into was Young Jedi. Mm. I didn't play anything prior to that, but it was just that sensationalism and the hype that came with the Phantom Menace where I wanted to have everything from, you know, the pillowcases and the T-shirts and the Taco Bell toppers and including a card collectible game that I had knew nothing about. But it had that logo on there. It was celebrating, you know, the movie had just come out. I was so much in that fervor and hype of the movie that I had to have everything. And that game sucked. But we played the <laughs> hell out of it. We really played the hell out of that game when it came out. I think we bought, uh, my brother's with us uh, tonight, uh, Alex, and we were talking about it uh, over text before we came on air. And uh, we bought so many of those cards, and I don't think, uh, it might have been at least a case or so of those things. And I don't I don't remember what the pull rates were or any of that stuff, but it just felt like every card was kind of like a common card. And I never put, I never like stuck a toe back into card collecting games, at least Star Wars, until this one, this is the one kind of to your, you made a great point early on, like there is an appetite for this and I'm not the only one. I happen to know other people that have never even touched the game or haven't touched it like myself. And since Young Jedi, maybe they dabbled in the 90s version when that came out. But for the most part, there is something kind of weird and special about this set. And I don't and that's not to say that it's going to be a great game or it's going to be a successful game. But I think they came in at the right time with the right approach to this game because it feels like they've really pulled in a lot of folks that uh, hadn't otherwise considered it, like myself. Yeah, they're really going to fit a niche, I think, when you have you have games like out there that are like Magic. Others have gone away. Uh, some have really you know filled the space. And I think for Star Wars to have finally a, a presence again is really exciting. I mean, really the only card games... I don't think I've ever played a Star Wars card game. I, well, that's not true. I did buy a Star Wars the deck building game just recently, uh, last mm -hmm. year. And it played that, and that's pr that's pretty fun. I did try Destiny, but finding someone to play consistently with was a challenge, so didn't play that. And I think the only other game, uh, Greg, I think is the Star Wars, what is it, the card trader game, like the the digital, the the mobile card game, right? So I think that's the only one I've actually played consistently for a long period of time as Albert starts to rip some packs here. Well, and if you see with Fantasy Flight Games, who actually does Star Wars Unlimited, done, done, did the deck building game, did Star Wars Destiny, you know, Destiny had a pretty good following. Ooh. Right. Um, but the problem is, is that they, they, they didn't renew the license with Lucasfilm. And so uh, that game came in hot and heavy and much like Unlimited, um, sold out very quickly. And the very first, it was very hard to get. And you're seeing some of the characters here. Yeah, Seven Sister. Nice. So which one are, so in every, in every pack, Albert, if I recall, there's going to be a, I think there's a foil card. So which one was the foil card in that, in that so pack? The, yeah. So the foil card in this one was the, what does that say? Consortium Starfighter? Oh, okay. Yeah. Which okay. I, I actually don't even have this card. I, and by the way, so 
I, I, I want you guys to pick up where you're talking about with the license and all that, because that is a really interesting story about how that happened. I, I just want to quickly mention a couple things. Number one, I did open up a box already because I had bought seven boxes. I have six here tonight, but I bought seven in total. Uh, and I actually pulled this card just really quickly. I know I've already kind of showed, I've teased it to a few folks. Uh, mm. But this is a showcase card. So this is the one out of every 24 boxes. I think there's some description. It's about 228 sure. packs, I think, yeah. Or 288 packs, rather. No, uh, I don't think, uh, well, we'll have to see. I, I, I thought I read something differently. But this is the one that, uh, I think you told me it was one in six boxes. Is that right? not right? Yeah. This is a showcase the foil? Yeah, I'm looking at the rates you gave me here before. They said showcase is about one in 288. So I'm assuming that's packs. Yeah, 288 packs. And there's 24 packs. So I think that breaks right, out so to that's, like well, that's about, about 12, 12 boxes. Yeah, it's about a dozen boxes then. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I think right now we were looking at the current sold rates. And they, uh, one, there's, these have been selling pretty consistently. Uh, this one's fetching about five to 600. Uh, what do you got there? You're showing something now. Well, what I was going to say is that now what you pulled was a like a leader card. Leader card has both on you know front and back. And this is you know, unfortunately with the background you can't see. If I move in, whoa! Here, let, me, um, let me pull you. I'll showcase you real quick here. So in which case, um, I think each booster is going to get you a leader card, and you're going to need like a leader and a base uh, in your deck of I think 50 cards. So in which case, what you're showing, what you're seeing there. Uh, that Albert has is like a special version of this leader card um, that I don't know if I had pulled one of those, I wouldn't be playing it. I would be getting it ready to sell <laughs> off uh, right. to pay for what, you know, for what sins you may have uh, may have done against the family finances. Yeah. But yeah. that's just to go to show you how gorgeous um, the card you pulled are is. And, the, and like I said, with those, there are different variants of each card. But what you got is the real special one, and that's the one that people are trying to get. Yeah, um, and that's it is like uh, that card for anybody that's watching will be up on eBay if you're interested as soon as this show is over. So uh, I well, plan to recuperate some of my funds selling that card alone. And you know we joke about that, but you know then then the next wave that this one's called Spark of the Rebellion. This and 250 cards. The next wave comes out in July. So you, there is a window and there's you know, 250 cards and that's it. As you see a ground unit right here. And you notice also, um, if you can pull that down a little bit, you're going to see units, you'll see ground and space units. So there's two big arenas, you know, there's two big arenas around your base and it's ground units and space. And these will take up a good chunk of your deck. Okay. You also notice that there'll be different colors because uh, they're aspects like right under like the left hand uh, number, you'll see like aspects like go up to the top the left top. So right there is what's known as an aspect. And I think there's six of them together. No, I haven't memorized these yet, <laughs> but although you can have any card in your deck, um, what you want to try to do is match the aspect that you see there in that unit with at least one that's on your either base or leader. Leaders mm -hmm. will have two. Your base generally has one and that'll allow you to play them. Otherwise you can play a card with a different aspect. You'll just have to pay a few, a couple more resources for them. Gotcha. Hey, you look also, at that. Finally, yep. I got this. Would be great to have because uh, I know that the the fellow that uh, did Ezra in Ahsoka and that name's just escaping me. He's doing the convention circuit, and that would be a fun card for him too. Because it's the not sign. it's not the Rebels Ezra, so right. and there isn't an Ahsoka card for him. Yeah, and Alex had uh, Alex had asked. Um, oh my gosh, Beta Girl's going to start a fight here about uh, Ezra. <laughs> uh alex asks is this all new artwork and i think my understanding yes. is yes yeah. it was all new artwork is that correct notice at the bottom of the card too you have the artist which i would say that uh you're not going to see that in the latest star wars galaxy release uh that where they didn't attribute the artist so in this case and i know there was some hubbub that if you looked at like destiny and some of the other like deck building games um you saw like a different style art this was clearly they were going for more of a cartoony type but mm -hmm. it's a consistent across and there are several artists there. And uh, I know that I've seen some on Instagram, but I just like the fact that, you know, now is it, is it easy for me to see that detail with my 53 year old eyes? No, but I like that it's there. <laughs> so there's a name there yeah. because there's the only thing harder to read is the rarity, whether it's common, rare and whatnot. I did a lot of reading this weekend just try to, to prepare for this. I'm well, like... you did way more than I did. I was sitting here just <laughs> chomping at the bit to open these things up. And that's about as far as I got. Well, I think this art style really works, though. I mean, it, it is very, it's still very vibrant and colorful. And that animated look, I think, is something that I think embodies Star Wars so well. And if I think back to some of those 
original cards that we love so much as kids and some that have come out on even the tops card trader app oh, you, cheer it. oh there you go cheer it yeah i think that's some of those are the ones that are the most memorable that they're just a bit stylistic but they're still capture what star wars looks like and you can almost imagine these scenes yep. playing out on screen sorry i've got a car going by uh but you, we can imagine them playing out on screen in this animated format that's dope and also it's fun because people want to play their characters. Like, you know, I know Sab Sabine Wren is, is, has a leader card right. and to try to mix and match. And it's fun because that way you can play a character against, or you can build a themed deck based on, you know, aspects or just like characters or whatnot. You know, notice in that case where there was two aspects for that unit to be played. Now there's also going to be ones that have like no aspect on them at all. Those are neutral cards and those can go in any deck. Okay. I noticed something too, like, and this is, um, I do mean this in sincerity. Like when I opened up my first box, there are a number of cards. Like I had a Bring lot that of the same closer, duplicates. Robert. Bring that one closer. Um, okay. Sorry. Is that like a, it says pirate star. Is that like pieced together or is that like cross section? I think it's it just... pieced together. It looks pieced <laughs> oh, okay. together here. Oh man. Okay. Cool. Almost like the Nihil, uh, kind of piece their piecemealed their stuff together as yeah, well. But with but... A lot more color than usual. <laughs> yeah. A little mm -hmm. bit more color. This is, this is more reminiscent of like resistance. Or of like your intro outfits in World of Warcraft. Well, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> oh, that's uh, oh so what I was going to say is I've noticed uh, a number of these cards I don't, I never got in the first box at all. Oh, look at that. I don't understand why that would be the case. Is that no, right? There's, there's Alex's card. Yeah, there you go. Well, in the, start, in the starter box, there's a starter box out there that has two decks on him, in him. And then you've got the, the boosters, which I think the boosters are a great deal because they're like, generally, if you could find them $5 for a booster and you get like, 15, 16 cards. And you know you're going to get a guaranteed leader in each one of those. And so, you know, I, I when I, when the boosters first came out, because the starter set came out first and it's around 30-ish dollars, you can still find it. And that's where you're going to get the mat, the counters, and the two decks that are fully playable. And then the boosters allow you to kind of mix and match in. So I got a bunch of boosters because I kind of like wanted to kind of build, you know, like a card collector. I want to build. There's the Sabrina Ren one. Uh, that's nice. really nice. And, you know, the red one, that's more of like if you if you know, like the style of play, like, you know, the, there's like the aggro types or the control types. Uh, definitely the reds are more aggro. Um, mm. The green, I think, command. Yeah, I think green Sabine is one of the one of the more popular decks right now. It's and so it's a red green deck. Yeah. Have you had any of the hyperspace cards yet, Albert? Those are the ones that no. are borderless. Yeah. No, I've not. Uh, no, I don't think so. I have, I do have a bunch of other ones, like I said, that I opened up. Uh, if we want, if you want to kind of, I can show you what those look like here. Oh, that's right. We'll, we'll encounter some. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I've well, seen that with, I've seen that with some events. You notice also with General Veers, by the way, you'll see some cards that have a little uh, diamond or something next to their name. And that limits the number of like ones that you can play at the same time. So next to General Veers, he's got like a little star. Oh, I and see I think. Right there. So, for example, some characters have like a different card, but they're the same. You know, like Princess Leia may have a couple different cards. Um, as long as they're not like there's some difference into them, you can play them both at the same time. Otherwise, you can't be running around with a bunch of general Veerses. Hmm. And really, you can't run around with like three more than three of any particular card. Um, you know, you can only really have the one leader and the one base. Makes sense. He shows up in a book very recently, by the way, General Veers. I won't say where, but he just showed up. In a book as a very young general viewers here we go look at there's the hyperspace card that you were looking for yeah that's i, I love the the borderless the frameless cards they just look so great when you have our edge to edge yeah Out that's a good looking card i, I love it's a great looking the, card yeah the tie fighter blasters and everything look great and then there's my foil there's a foil mm. and all right well we are four decks five decks four decks into uh mini and something else, because you can have multiples of each card, um, you know, it's not uncommon for someone. I think Greg bought like a couple different uh, boxes. He didn't go in on a case. But, you know, if you are wanting to kind of build different decks, you might need a couple of boxes just because you may need to get multiples of some of these cards. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's cool. So I'm just going to I'll probably start with this and then from here on out just because, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So that's a hyperspace foil card. So that's, that's nice. Hyperspace. Looks like you got another Sabine Wren. Yep. More echo base. See, so when when Jonesy buys his case, you got some trades. Oh, yeah, God. there you go. <laughs> Only if there's a Hondo Anaka card in all of this. I haven't found. Oh wait, yeah, I think there is actually. 
I'll save you one, buddy, if you don't pick one up. I'll well, if you that. get it in foil, I'll give you a nickel. <laughs> Seen that guy before. ISB agent. Yep. ISB yeah. had, yeah, you got the Corellian fighter. Horse, Horse joke. joke. There oh. you go. Eater. I like it. Yeah, I like. That's, that's not. Oh, there you go. I love that design. So you're going to have units, you'll have events and upgrades. There's Bodhi. Yeah, the upgrades and the equipment are interesting because they they you can apply them to a number of cards, right? But you if like so Luke Skywalker's lightsaber can be used by other characters, but he only gets the extra benefit if he wields it, right? Yeah, and then like each of the leaders will have like an action and then and, like the leaders will have something called an epic action, which takes a right. lot of resources. It's sort of a one big, you know, you know, come show what you are, and then you got so you gotta use that, you oh, know. I like I like that art. Yeah, that's sorry. Nice. I was I just ran away from it, but uh, yeah. I think that's what Rebel Assault. Pull 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 down a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Rebel yeah, Assault. Yeah. That was that's a great piece, right? I've seen that before. And that's a foil too. Well, well, it's got a little hollow on there, I guess, but not necessarily foil. All right, come on. We're waiting for that money card still here. <laughs> Daddy wants some new tires for the rig. <laughs> I just want to break even at this point. Oh, this is like my favorite droid, uh, probably ever. Probot. Next, yeah. And this is the foil that came with this one. Probe droid. Um, oh, you do get a... You got, got a some Thrawn. Yeah, there, I, yeah, I was like, oh, I've got him. I actually have a, a few of these in the other... And that's a leader card, too, so that's a nice... Yeah. It's got a flip. That's interesting, too, the way they did that. you got the leader cards have a horizontal display, and then, of course, you've got it... In They're going to start out horizontal, board. but when you do your epic action and he comes into play, that's when you flip them to look like the other cards. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Right. And why leader cards don't the... yeah, and like Greg was saying at the beginning of the show, like why you don't have like a generic background is like those leader cards are in play from you know from the start of the game. You lay those out as well as your base. So oh. they're not secret or anything like that. Everybody knows what we're playing with. There's Yoda. Oh, that's an interesting take. I like that. I like that a lot. Joshua Cars. Moment of peace. It's called it's called Time for Dinner Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I like that siege tank. Oh, now Gladiator we're talking. Gladiator Star Destroyer. There you go. That's cool. Yeah. Syndicate, Syndicate lackeys. lackeys. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. I like that. I do. I have to say, I do like the artwork. Right. It's sometimes I, it's always hit or miss. They really struck parts, a nice but, balance. I think. Yeah. There's your no oh, Greedo. Get out of here. I hate that. Red Hope. Oh, fifth, fifth brother. brother. I don't know how many of the Inquisitors are in here actually. Now they say that. Bail. That's a nice bail. Thank you, Jimmy Smith. And then there's the foil we looked at earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I would love, and even that, if they weren't all foil cards, I would love to have all hyperspace cards. So all, you know, frameless cards, I think just would look really sharp. That would, that'd probably be worth it. And they're really not that expensive. I think on the aftermarket, you usually go from, you know, a regular common card, it's probably a few cents or, you know, 10 or 20 cents for the card or whatnot, maybe up to a dollar. That that, yeah, there like you it. go. Now I would fill my deck with all of that too. So it's a hyperspace foil. At at Walker, AT AT, however you'd like to pronounce it. That is and those are stunning. and that is that, that is eights across the board. So that one's gonna take you it's gonna take you a little while to bring that one into play because you're gonna start off your opening hand, you're gonna put down two resource cards, and they're kind of like you know, like the energy or the mana in magic. And so you're gonna need, you know, resources to play these cards. Yeah. There's the Inquisitor leader card. Grand Inquisitor. Is that your grand inquisitor, Albert? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Roundhead rather than round head. oblong. I don't really care. One way or the other. Oh. that? Mm. Vanquish. Vanquish. Who is that? Is that the Emperor? Hmm. Oh, it's okay. like the oh. Emp oh, is that no, it's Vader uh with Vader or with uh, the Emperor up over his shoulders, huh? Yes. You with all just, the it's just you see his skeleton a lot more. Oh, oh I see that. Oh, that's dope. Who's the artist on that? Oh, that is no, wild. That's... Islam Abishadi. Abishadi. Wow, that is fantastic. Yeah, that is a, that is a really cool view. I like quite that the a lot. moment uh, too, especially to get all of the skull like that. I was happy to see um, on eBay. I was able to get a couple of different lots of commons just to kind of d do some tech building. And where I don't have, I, I won't get a lot of the the foils and such. But you know, a lot of times, like folks like Albert who bought cases, they may go through pull the cards that they want to do, and then they'll just kind of dump or flood the commons and stuff. And this is a great way to pick up some extra cards. If you're trying to fill out your deck 
And then it's kind of fun because when you get random lots of anything, you don't quite know what you get. So it's kind of like ripping a pack. <laughs> yeah. Second hand. Right. Right. Very true. Crafty smuggler. Uh, so many of these cards, I swear to you, I did not get in that first box. And I don't understand why if that was, I wonder if that was like a starter deck or something. Another Yoda, another Yoda card. I thought that was yellow for a second. but So that's your actual Yoda leader card. Mm. Uh... Is that another? Is that another ground? Oh, no, unit? it's got a back on it. No, this. Oh, is what a, is that? Uh, let's. See. That's just a ground unit. Old but you know, so also oh, Yoda okay. has. So you could put him on. You can put him in the ground arena. But there was also some other cards that had you know Yoda on it. Ooh, general tag. And this has this has that kind of flavor of like the the Star Wars CCG where you had a lot of these characters that. You know, when they first came out, we didn't know what the names of these were, and they had a lot of different um, kind of like minor characters. That's a great Kenobi, by the way. He's yeah, moving, like, like actually attacking. <laughs> Feels like you're really starting to, if you could just grow that out a little bit, man, like, I think you could pull it off at this point. I was going to go for the Balin Skull look. Oh, have, that's right, yeah. I, no, cut, I need to cut my hair either way. When you start losing my life weight is, and getting old, then go for Kenobi. My, my life has been threatened if I cut my hair, so... All right, here we go. Uh, I don't know if I'm how I'm doing on time. How are we doing on time here? It's 9.04. 9.04. All right, what time do you turn into a pumpkin, Greg? Oh, I've got a little bit. Of, uh, I was able to uh, subcontract out the, uh, the white that's, stick up tonight. I like that art on that base. So that's chopper base. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, hyperspace, no borders. Get a hammerhead there. Beautiful. Yeah, and I apologize. Like the camera, it's so weird. The camera is one way, but I, it's the reverse when I move it. So that's why there's a lot of moving around. It's because I'm dumb and can't figure out which direction I need to move the card. So it's in focus. Regional sympathizer. Huh. Now you'll notice, like for example, the power like in the upper left hand corner. So when you're building your decks, like that one has the, the patrolling V-Wing has a two. So you want to make sure it's kind of like your basic Pokemon that you want to have some cards like in your first couple of hands that you can actually play. So mm -hmm. having like about a dozen or so, at least ones and twos, make sure that you got stuff going in the, the, uh, the arena right away. Cause your base, you know, you basically the, the object of the game is to reduce your opponent's base from like 30 to zero. And you're going to put out units to, you know, ground units and space units to kind of soak up a little bit of damage and do some damage to your opponent. Oh, there you go. That's a nice little moment. That's a great one. I'm sure it. A maneuver. I, I think you had the hyperspace of that one. I think I did. I, they're all, there's just Getting a big ads. pile of cards now at this point, but there you go. There's my foil for this pack, Regional Sympathizer, which I don't know that I'll ever play that card, but it's pretty. Yeah, so you can put aside the ones that are the ones you're looking to sell, but you can still play the card that you, that you have. That's kind of the nice thing about the variants. Yeah, and you notice, know, like, there are a few different variants of the pack uh, as he's furiously ripping these things apart. There's a the pack art, or actually, it's kind of nice, and there's a couple different variants. Yeah. Um, you see here, you've really got Thrawn and Princess Leia and Chewbacca. Um, it's really well, really smart looking packs. Uh oh, hold on. Something's jumping out on this one. Okay, so we got a hyperspace card. Oh, so. that's okay. sick. No speeder. That's good. Yeah, you know, when I bought these, so uh, I want to say uh, first a shout out to uh, Sentinel Hobby in San Antonio, which is where I bought these cards. A uh, good buddy of mine that started that uh, business uh, two years ago, and it's gotten to the point where he's says he's broken even. And, and if anybody knows anything about this industry or comic book collecting, it's those are no small feet. It's no small feet, right? It's hard <laughs> to get going and everybody has a dream, right? But uh, thankfully he's been able to be successful. Uh, but he's the one that uh, allowed me to kind of purchase these from him. I, uh, I asked him going in, I said like, you know, I, I really wanted to have a playable deck first and foremost. Wow. You know, if I get the foils and I get the rares and all that other great stuff, then fine, so be it, right? But I wanted something that if I really wanted to actually play this game and go sit at a game store, uh, you know, on a Saturday afternoon and play, I'd have something that was effective. And so he said, well, I think you should probably get about three, maybe four boxes. So I said, well, of course, doubled that. Let's yep. go with seven then. Yep. <laughs> so The two uh, key words here, please tell me you got it at cost. Uh, I got it at, at a pretty good <laughs> price. Yeah. Um, still no small uh, penny. I mean, these things are, uh, you know, I didn't realize how much they were going to be when I said seven. He gave me it the price. It doesn't rain a lot in Texas. You don't need those new tires. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was uh, quite a bit. Like, thankfully, though, like I said, that one card, if I can sell that for five, six hundred, I think I've 
almost earned back all the money that I spent on this already. Once we get done with the stream, hit the eBay account. <laughs> it's and put already that in draft, Greg. It's already in draft. I just got to hit send at this point. So, um, ah, I don't think we've been... seen that one yet, have we? No, first time. ATST. Uh, all right, let's see what else. Admiral Piet. Yeah. Well, sure, we got a Luke card here, Luke on Dagobah. I don't think we've seen that one just yet either. Ooh. And also what I would do, Albert, if when you see like some of these high, higher cards that have like, you know, six, seven and eight, mm -hmm. set those aside. <laughs> those are ones that, you know, like when you're kind of like towards so the end of your game, the, you want to bring uh, up. The point value yes. up here, six, seven and eight. You want to have some things to come out punching with at the end of the game. Okay. Because that by then you'll have had enough turns to get out enough resource cards that you can play some of these ones. Yeah, gotcha. So it is very similar to like a, like a Magic the Gathering or... Um, I guess Pokemon, you got like an evolved you know. Pokemon, right? That you're going to need, you know, lots yeah. of energy to play that. And it really, the only thing with bases, you'll notice it's just the colors, the, the aspects. There's not really anything a base gives you that another base doesn't really. Hmm. There are quite a few new cards in this in these decks. All right, oh, there you go. There we go. This is worth, you know, for all the Luke fans out there. Uh, that says that's an event. strike. What does that say? Strike, strike true. true. A tactic. A friendly unit deals damage equal to its power to an enemy unit. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds cool. And it's Luke Skywalker. All right. We got a Jawa. That's disgusting. We're not going to look at that card. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Right, here we go. Look at this, guys. There's an eight. Our buddy a ground Palpatine. unit at an eight. And you see what he kind of does. You know, mm -hmm. Your hit points and your damage both are sixes. And in that case, like you'll notice like the, the text in red, um, if you have the starter pack or you get the rules, there's like, you know, like raid or sentinel or some of these things that are, that are done. And that'll clearly say it on the card. And I think when you're learning to play, I think some of these, when to play this in this particular instance, this ground unit doesn't have any special, um, thing that happened. It's just basically, you're going to deal your damage. And yeah, it this is a, it's a foil. This one's a foil. It's interesting that he's a one. I did like that. Like even the most common of the common cards has a chance to actually be a foil card, which I thought was nice. Don't see yeah, that you very often. Yeah, you could really collect all foils if you really wanted to. Yeah, I'm really I impressed they put Mumra in the in the game. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's not Mumra. That is an '80s reference for anybody that's uh, not there. All right, so maybe we'll only get through one of these boxes tonight. Uh, or, or I can speak. There's your that, boba. There's, there's so now boba. you have the boba. You can you can sell, but you can still create a deck around a, a deck around boba. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like what you did there. Oh, oh look at this. There's my. Foil. He's a true breaker. He's just like no, 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 flip, flip, nope, flip, nope. flip. We ain't got nothing. We haven't time. It's this is all in the interest of time, honestly, more than anything. <laughs> Actually, right. let me let me do this. I'll, so the, I'll... the crazy. So to give people a comparison, so the boba fett card that Albert just pulled is about a nickel compared with the foil one that he you know, pulled the last week or whatever it was, that's like $400. So yeah. And they're, they're the same card. I mean, they're essentially the same, 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 value, card. Yeah, same, yeah, same playability of the card, but you can clearly. impress your friends at the local store or you can just sell it and make back the money you made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely a status symbol card. As a matter of fact, I get nervous of him holding it, get it in, get it in a penny <laughs> sleeve know, or a right. top loader and stop playing with it. Uh, a little, little too much, a little too many hand oils on there. Yeah, I hate to say this. I was using it as a book, a bookmark when I was reading the living force at one God, point. No. Yeah, um, here's it for a coaster. Yeah. <laughs> as a coaster. Yeah, put your, put your drink on it. It's fine. Here's yeah, Capital City sure again. Fine. Look Constance. at those handsome devils right there. Dead as the day is now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they should really point the guns all in the same direction. But... Yeah. yeah. I like yeah, that card. Vader's girl, the cat says, so buy a box and hope you're lucky. Got it. Yeah, that's pretty much what you're, go yeah. you're going for. It's your only strategy, really, at this point. Um, who are these guys here? Or download DraftKings and have the same kind of luck. Mm. Can't do that Ooh. here in Texas. I like that. What's that, the Imperial Interceptor? Yeah, I just like that art. I'm yeah. just here for the artwork, man. Oh. All right, uh, let's see. Yep, yep, really cool, cool. Uh-huh, sure. Oh, here we go, look at that. There's another eight. Ooh, reinforcement walker. Mm-hmm. Nice. Those fans yeah, that one's bringing the walkers. guns. You keep that one in your in your green deck. And there's my foil. Jetta. I like the Jetta. I like, I like these characters. I like it a lot. That's a two. Jetta Agitator. Oh, man. Um... All right, well, I'm going to keep opening this. Why don't we, let's see, how much, what are we at here? 40 minutes? Um, why don't we put him through the ringer, Jonesy? Do you want to run that while I continue to open up cards here? And if I uh, get anything really fantastic, I'll kind of break in. But I'll go on mute and just continue to open so people can watch. 
All right, sure. All right, Greg. So what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Empire Strikes Back. Any particular um, reason or story behind that? You know what? Uh, of course, I come in with A New Hope, um, oh, and it changed everything. But I think that Empire has aged so much better. And I just think it, it's, to me, I think as I get older, it, it's just a, it's a great all around, all around movie. And I think there's just so much in it. You get to see new places and new ships and the, and the, the, the special effects were really great. And so I would have to say, yes, it's, it's still tops my list. Very nice. Actually, I was just, I saw Albert's card there and it caught my eye. It was the shore trooper one, Albert. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I was just on that card. Just, I don't know if you noticed it's, it was a shore trooper card. But it never said short trooper. Uh, right. It said it's, something like enhanced. Uh, where the heck did that go? Here it is. Yeah, it says seasoned shore trooper, which I guess maybe there's a shore trooper and then there's a seasoned shore trooper. I don't know. That's interesting that they use that verbiage, though, to distinguish them. I want to say that card's actually fairly popular to use in decks. Okay. Uh, but okay. All right. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, thanks for that, Greg. That's, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Empire. It just seems, you know, the story doesn't, the story just doesn't, it's just timeless, I think, is what it comes to it. And it just, you can just pop it in and the the effects, I think this is where the special editions really helped clean things up and really mm -hmm. helped make it more enjoyable, a little more subtle. And I think it overall still, it, it holds up really well over time. Uh, agreed, agreed. And, and, you know, I can, I love the moments with Yoda. I think one of the, one of my favorite shots is, you know, when Yoda's kind of, you see kind of a long shot where you see a lot of background behind Yoda and he's just kind of like standing there. I think it was like close to when he's like raising the X-Wing. And a lot of the, a lot of the stuff he lays down for Luke as he just schools him. Um, it's really great. And I think when you when you saw it for the first time, it was really quite magical. And there was a whole lot of like, wow, you know, he can, he's able to do this. He's really powerful. Um, so it was just really, it was a great, great film. Yeah. So we, we've got a question down here in the, in the chat. So welcome to those who have joined us late here with Lauren and Jackson Abbott and Jackson's asking, hey guys, what's the best card in these packs? Is there a, a is there a clear winner, Greg? Of are there certain cards that that seem to rise to the surface? Not value wise, just maybe play wise that you've come across as you were reading through some of the games and how they're playing out. Are there are there some that seem to be in every deck or in most decks? Um, I don't have that th enough experience to. I mean, one thing that's nice is, um, and I'm sure like in your area. Uh, one of the local card, uh, one of the local game stores was having a night where they were playing like a Thursday night where they were playing it. And I was kind of hoping to kind of get in with, you know, at least get a kind of a starter deck uh, going. But I would say, you know, each of the leaders really seem to be like really powerful. But I would say, obviously, your Vader's, um, you know, your Vader's, your Emperor's, your Luke's, all of them are going to be pretty high. Um, I have a Count Dooku that's a ground unit that is pretty nice. It's one of my higher, like higher as far as like playable value cards. And so some of the ones like I was telling with, uh, with Albert, like when you see like the eights, the six, seven and eights, tuck those aside because I think some of the ones you're kind of wanting to go look for. I mean, obviously he has the, you know, any of those like one per case type ones that you mm -hmm. like the leader variants, you get one of those, you know, you've got it. But I would say, you know, like in the starter kit where you have Luke and Luke and Vader, for example, you know, I think Vader is a little more powerful, but Luke can get in quicker. You know, it doesn't take as many resources to bring in Luke. So there's some nice balance there with a lot of those leaders. But I would say if you see cards that have like the the higher the higher value that take more resources, those are the ones that can have you can have some fun with. Yeah, that's a great point, Jackson. So if you're if you're curious about it, there are websites out there that you can Google and you can go to local card shops. They have them all across all the various cities. I'm not sure which which town you're in, but you can look these up. I've seen groups on Facebook as well that are trying to help people find games. And, and a lot of shops are hosting these. Uh, around release, they were doing these about three or four times a week uh, sometimes, and they'll have mm -hmm. dedicated nights. So I like that Wampa. That is really sharp. Is that, I foil? Think there's a Wait, is that foil as well? Yeah, so it's coming off me. It is foil, and it is a hyperspace card. So it was a kind of a double bonus card. Oh, look at this. You Dude. get a Wampa. Yeah, Wesley Wampa needs, a, needs his card buddy. Yeah, that's Man, a great that, I, that is, I like that card a lot. I don't care if it's worth anything. Yeah, I just like it. I think there's ways you can do online as well, because I know some some games did have like an online component where you can test out decks and certain like that. But definitely, I would say anywhere, the, there's, I know a Facebook group, I just joined like a Star Wars Unlimited one. So yeah. those are kind of nice to kind of get your feet wet, because a lot of times there'll be like questions answered or if someone's looking to either trade or sell off decks. 
uh, or pieces like that you're going to get. But yeah, a lot of times your local game store has a calendar up that just says, hey, we're doing this and night or just simply ask. Um, you know, the people working there and they'll say like, Hey, uh, yeah, we've got a couple of people that are playing this and they come in, you know, or whatnot, or maybe you can start that group. Well, and, and Albert and I, we had talked a little bit about this, about maybe trying to figure out how do we play this on overwhelming barrage. I like that too. Anything with the starter story and foil just look amazing. Of, of like somehow, like how does this game play you on a, in a more online remote format? And then does that, is that something that might work? I think it goes pretty fast. I think if you have, if you had two, like if you're doing something like this and had like two of the guest accounts. Oh, there you go. Direct your credit like leader card. Nice. You could probably play a few rounds of this. Oh, what is that? Command center. It's a base. Totally. Nice. I like that. Very cool. He's getting, he's getting better doing this. I like it. There we go. There you there's go. your there's hyperspace this, foil of that. There's this boys and foil. Yep. Just shooting each other dead. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yep. All right, cool. Then let's uh, let's find another question. But yeah, thanks, Jackson, for the question. And uh, it, again, if anybody else has any questions, we'll do the best we can. That's why we brought Greg in here. He's our our resident uh, expert. Again, the game is very new, of course. So, and uh, finding games to play and then trying to make time for that's a little bit challenging. But we're trying to do the best we can. We're novices at this on the on the Cantina Cast side of things. But uh, if you have questions, we'll do the best we can to answer them. All right, next question here. Greg, are you big into the novels? Do you read the novels very often? I'm not as big a reader as I should be, although I did, you know, I, I started the I started the High Republic books in earnest with, was it uh, Light of the Jedi? Um, yeah. I, I liked A New Dawn, you know, the, the Rebels book, and I did right. like the Ahsoka book when it came out. Um, and I know that I think because uh, John Jackson Miller lives in our general area within the state or so, he'll be at C2E2 and I wouldn't mind getting a copy of his new book uh, signed because I have I have one or two other ones that sign. I think I have the Kenobi book and I have a new Dawn that's signed by him. So, um, but also I, I did finally finish. Um, was it the first Thrawn book? The, what is it? What was the, oh, um, Heir to the Empire. Uh, so only started Never. 30 years late. Never heard uh, of it. Never heard of it um, by Timothy Zahn, but uh, I would like to finish those. And then the uh, Han Solo at Stars and I'm trying to, I have and my backpack. I wanted to kind of renew those Brian Daly books. Um, so that's not, that's a non-answer, but those are at least books that I've heard of and tried to have read. Have you, have, has a, have any of the Star Wars books, have you found a favorite that you've liked more than the others? Has any, does one rise to the, to the surface, the, the cream of the crop of what you've come across so far? It's always been tough because, you know, like starting like as old as I am, a lot of times if the characters don't sound like what you what in your head canon think they are, you can, that Heir to the Empire, I think, started off that way. But I would say, what, what's the uh, what's the Asajj Ventress Quinlan Vaz book? Oh, Dark Disciple. Yeah, I, I must love it because I have started that thing about 20 times and <laughs> it's supposed to be really good. And I liked it and I liked her. I just have not finished it. And so that's I have a problem with finishing books. It's a so fantastic book. Yep, it's definitely a fantastic book. I'm looking forward to saying that I finished that book. That that's what I will say about that. Okay. All right. I'm I'm back just really quickly. I picked up. I don't know if you guys saw. I got a yeah, not a foil, city. but I got a Lothal calls a card. So oh, you know how nice. much I love rebels, and that's pretty special. What's cool though is in the back. Look at this. Yes, the token, the upgrades, or the token upgrades. Um, you'll see those. There's there was uh, one that has like, um, it'll either have like that on it or in the back like a mm -hmm. shield or a token, and sometimes these come into play where you can put on um, you can put a shield. And for example, if a character has a shield on it, you know, it, you do an attack on the shield goes away, but it doesn't do any more damage to it. Yeah. But. I just yeah, love the artwork on this card altogether. I want and, this one. In a and bring back that, that Luke Skywalker watching uh, Aunt Beru and uncle Owen, you know, roast like marshmallows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cause that was I foil, saw that right? one. Uh, I was gonna put and it it's a side. foil. That's right. And it's foil. Yeah. That's, that's why <laughs> really jumped out to me. I was like, this is real life. Yeah. Crispy what, foil. What, oh, it's right here. It's right here. Sorry, I didn't. I, yeah, look at there you go. Oh, man. You can almost see the gold glistening flames of Aunt Beru, which is really nice. Yeah. Man. Beautiful. Beautiful card. It's what actually called I, what, Smoke and Cinders. Smoke and Cinders. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Uncle Owen is Smoke and Beru is Cinder, but I think that's just... That was one of my favorite shirts from Celebration that we got was Aunt Beru's Dark Rose Coffee. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, uh, you know, I have that... I have that uh, coffee cup, and it's not been opened uh, back here. Would you consider that Alderaan spoilers? Oops. Oops. Too soon? Maybe. Too soon. 
All right. Hey, uh, also, look. Yay. Look at that. One We're box. Through a whole box. Nicely done. All Five right, so what's, more to go. Five what's, more to go. What's jumped out at you so far, Albert? What, which, which cards have made an impression on you? Any, any that you uh, set aside, you're like, like, man, this is really pretty. Yeah, this Wampa one is really good. It doesn't, I mean, the camera probably doesn't do it justice, although if I get it close enough, you can kind of see the Yeah, it's kind of working. Yeah, I like that. Uh, that one so far has been my favorite, and then the Lothal one. I just really like the fact that it's borderless, and it's yeah. got some great That's artwork such here a, of Luke. What I like about the Luke and with Yoda is, like, great use of all the space around it, so it's mm -hmm. not... You get you, you get the the entire scope of what they're doing. I like that a lot. Jackson Abbott in the chat. Would you guys ever consider doing a podcast with the Star Wars Tough podcast? I guarantee they have probably have more listeners. I I actually have been talking to them, and we may be doing something here soon. Yeah, so, they they're they're Texas guys as well. So down here, right down the road. Yeah, um, we we've seen them at at various celebrations. Then they they say hi, we say hi. That so it, that'd be pretty cool. They're they're a good group. Yeah, so keep stay tuned. Stay tuned. Something is coming. Something's brewing. All right, so there's other great cards in here, but I did I did already I, if you saw there was a sneak peek. I got a foil <sighs> borderless. So Oh, Ooh, the Bendu. Look who it is. The Bendu. Nice. Where's my boy at? Where's uh sure. what's his face? What's the back look like? Oh, uh Fred. No, oh, there's nothing okay. on it. It's just a photo. Okay. Yeah, but this is Fred's character. Every That's time Fred comes sick. on the show, all he does is talk about the Bendu. I don't know what I mean, I he's a cool character, don't get me wrong. But he's obsessed with the Bendu, so I'll rub this in his face at some point. Very nice. All right, you keep ripping packs. Uh, so, all right, back to maybe some questions here for you, Greg. What's your favorite non-force wielding character in Star Wars? Boy, I went back and forth on this, but because of a question down down the road, I'm going to say Han Solo uh, because I liked Han Solo. It was my first Kenner figure that I got, and uh, I just he always just kind of like clicked right away. He was the cool he was the cool cat. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's the regular version or the regular foil for a Wampa. And again, hold that up with the other with the other Wampa. You can just kind of people can see the difference between the kind of the regular base card with foil versus the the hyperspace without the framing. It just makes such a huge difference. I mean, they, they both look sharp, but man, that borderless. That's where it's at. Yeah. And up. because the foils are not that you know, like you could you could put together a nice deck of foils without like you know spending a lot of bank. Yeah, what I've noticed is a lot of them are about maybe a dollar a card or, or less, uh, just depending on which kind of card you're looking for. And it seems pretty doable to have it. Yeah, and just wait a few months when that next set comes out, and I'm sure these will even drop for further. Oh, yeah, these will these will plummet unless there's special cards that, that just right. fit certain archetypes, yeah. That's dope. There you go. There's your boy, Greedo. Nice pull, Albert. Great pull, kid. McClunky. McClunky. All righty. All right, so all right, back to the questions. What about your favorite Jedi? Who's your favorite Jedi? It has to be Kanan Jarrus. Um, Kanan, wow. I was a big Rebels fan when it came in, and I liked the Good concept answer. of the of the Jedi with the gun. Um, but I, you know, I think Freddy did a great job voicing him, and I just loved the character arc and uh, such a tragic ending. But uh, great, great, great Jedi. There's a good. And speaking of uh, non-Jedi, there's Director Krennic. Nice frameless. There's a hyperspace, yeah, a frameless one. Yeah, I mean, Ken Jarrus, you can't really go wrong. I mean, it, the the arc that the character went through the entire series and the relationships that he built with not only with uh, Hera, of course, but with Sabine and mm -hmm. with Ezra, just man, just that was it's such a great. It went that series just went so many great places, and I think the character of Kanan really helped it. Like, I think it really was instrumental in making sure that 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 series was a success of balancing out some of the angstiness that we got from Ezra and company. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Snapshot reflexes. The Mando. Yeah. Four yeah, like hyper space. sharp. It's got Mando. Uh only one point. So I don't know. This is just kind of one of those. You may attack with an attached unit. So it's a it's an upgrade card, right? Upgrade card. It's an yeah. upgrade, yeah, for a character. So if you had Mando or if you had some other character, you could slap that on there. It looks brilliant. It they got again, it looks more yellow, but it's actually way more gold. Yeah, that gold look. No, it's coming through. I love with the the smoke and the dust around it. That creates such great depth. Yeah. So that's, that's a good nice. one. All right. As you were, I'll keep going here. Yeah. Quick pause and just say thanks to everyone out in the live stream. Appreciate everyone coming out. Hope you're enjoying it. We're just ripping some packs, talking about the cards as they come up. If you've missed anything, scroll back in. And Greg gave us a good rundown of the game, some of the mechanics of what you have in there. And we're just shooting off some questions as Albert continues to flip through. He's already uh, burned through one box. And just burning through another as we have time here and just 
just having a, a hangout session. So appreciate y'all joining us. If you have any questions, please do Ooh. pop them out in the chat and we will do our best to highlight those and answer them. Tonight's poll question, will Albert make his money back? Well, yeah, I think he'll be all right. I think I'll be all right. I think I made it. <laughs> if you pull, yeah, so if you pull one other, if you're able, if you're lucky enough to pull another showcase foil, Oh, yeah. Man. I mean, the other I mean, ones are the other ones are still like two hundred dollars each or something like that. So they, yeah. you still do pretty all right. And and just to be clear, like I, I'm not. I think I I think I invested six hundred and fifty dollars into all of these. Oh. So oh, yeah. I think so, I'll, yeah. I should get that back. Dude, I well, saw a case yeah. on sale for a grand. So you did very well. Oh really? Wow, that's gone up quite a bit in price. And if that's the case, no is, so <laughs> Greg, is that? I don't know if you know any of the history about, or the story behind it. Is that because of, are they getting hard to find now, or is it? A case is just more likely to have a showcase card. And I love that snow speeder, right? Look at that. Right. I would say a case would be very, you know, you'd probably get a, a, the card in there that like something like that Albert pulled. But the fact that you go to your local store and they don't have product, you know, they might have some starter kits, but yeah. they're not going to have these, they're not going to have the booster pack boxes. And that was kind of like with like, kind of reminding me of like when you're, when a new card set was coming out, people were buying these $99 boxes of boosters. Four to try to pull like the foils, you know, the hyperspace foils and whatnot. Right. So you had a combination of right, you know, not not no new product out for tops yet this year. A, a game, a brand new game, Star Wars, and so a lot of people were fishing for really good cards. And then all of a sudden you go in, and now now you can see there's a scarcity, and so people are buying stuff online now. The the thing will be is like, how long will this last? Will they get, you know, like when July comes and, and more product comes out and it starts to supply starts to meet demand, you'll see a lot of the stuff drop. So this stuff kind of like cabbage, you know, it's only going to have a shelf life for so long before, right. you know, there's it, you know, there's just so many cards in there. And of course, the same thing will happen. The the next release to come out, there won't be that many of the hyper, the, 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 the fancy one per case of whatever that set's going to be. And so that's going to kind of go through that same cycle until you probably get like two or three releases in where. It's going to kind of settle down and hopefully people are still playing it because that's what's going to keep the game going. Yeah, exactly. It's that duration, that that longevity of the game that's going to keep this interesting. It's not going to be the collectors. It's going to be the enthusiasm for the mechanics of the game, the the sustainability of the game. game. Yeah. yeah, these are good looking cards. I like these a lot. Ooh, I like that that Falcon one. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, what's that card there, Albert? Asteroid Sanctuary. An event. I like that blue trail going into the wormhole. It'd be fun not to invite myself on, on here again. It'd be fun in about a year to see where all this is. And do, it would a, be. do another I'm, type show where you could see, oh, there you go, chopper, done. Love that action pose. That would look great in a foil as well. That one, not as exciting as chopper in a foil. Not going to lie. <laughs> that chopper car was a good looking card. Uh, uh, Greg, I think, I mean, yeah, a year, I think even six months from now, I think when we look at the, as we get closer to the holiday season, you know, what's the landscape look like for the game? What's the health of the game? Because you usually get a pretty good idea because gamers don't right. mess around with this stuff, right? Card gamers, this is a this is an investment for a lot of these a lot of these folks. And for anybody that, that grew up playing magic or is in heavy into magic, I think you man, I like that speeder bike. I, those motion shots are just so great. And I think a little bit of the Gaussian blur in the back, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean, anytime you're starting to invest this kind of money, you've really got to You've got to have that playability because they're going to churn these out. If it's anything like Magic and some of these other games, they they have expansions, what, every like six or eight weeks now, and they change which cards are legal, which ones are not, as the game matures. Mm. Oh, Cantina Braggart. I like it. That's Albert on the left. That's me on the right. I don't know which one was better looking. And by then, hopefully, you've had a chance to play, whether it's in your shop, whether you've done like an online one and you can actually see and you go, yeah, that was kind of a fun game. I, was, I didn't quite get it. Or you go, OK, now I'm kind of into it. And, you know, I have a couple of decks. Maybe I don't have, you know, the nine or ten Destiny decks that I still have in a bucket of dice, but it's still fun. Or, you, hey, it's a beer and pretzel kind of night. We're just going to crack open a game or so and have at it. Yeah, exactly. As we get Ooh. through. Oh, there it is in a foil. He's getting better scout, at finding like scout bike pursuer. Very nice. Love that laser. That looks really sharp. Okay, so we talked about favorite Jedi. What about your favorite Sith character? Boy, this one also was was a tough one, and I was coming back. But you know what? Um, in thinking about like that, because there was a couple of questions on the comics, and uh, you know, of course, a lot of these Sith, like you know, Asajj and Count Dooku, and all these, you know, even Maul, they've had arcs that were in and out of Sith. 
Um, but I kind of went back to, was it, um, I think it's, is it Lumira uh, from the, from the Marvel comics, uh, the former Shia Bree uh, that was uh, in the Marvel run that um, was a plant by the emperor in the rebellion uh, was supposed to have an affair with Luke. And then he ends up killing her off spoilers, uh, but she comes back and gets resuscitated by Vader and kind of turned in sort of a Sith. Uh, right. Sith type being, but she has a like a, a lifespan out, you know, in and out of the comics, and it was kind of nice to see that, you know, to see that that kind of go on. And so I would just say for a little bit of nostalgia, either Asajj or um, this other, and I always I always kind of uh, blew her name anyways. It's it's Lumira, something like that. Yeah, uh, Lumia. Uh, we, we've got we've got some folks in the chat here that will yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it was, I think there's a Lumia, a Lumia as well. Um, and she had kind of like a force. She had kind of like a light whip. She had, um, it was a little different, but uh, she came back in the comics later, and it was kind of nice to see a recurring character uh, like that. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, it is Lumia, Dark Lady of the Sith, right? Research on the fly. Do you have a question over in the chat there, Albert, from Rob? Jonesy, Any zero the hut cards? Come on, man. Why are you going to do this? No, we have not gotten zero the we hut. A, we need a zero count. A zero zero count as a right. Hey, look that I got a I got that oh, gladiator ooh. star destroyer in a in a foil. So sell it cool. to Jonesy. Give him all the capital ship uh, cards. Right, I'm a capital collector. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right, we got your favorite Sith, and that that was a good one. I like the deep cut there. Not that's not always on the front forefront of what people are. Ooh, nice little Emperor Palpatine leader. Is that that's a leader card, right? Yeah, yeah you know, notice, yeah. notice 10. <laughs> right. So I, I put this cards? one in a foil somewhere. I think I put it away already, but I did pull this in a foil earlier. I just didn't stop. Albert's to, doing a card sort later. I can just uh, yeah, tell. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm I gonna can just, smell a good card sort. It's going to be all weekly. I'm long. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, your, hey, your brother did have another good uh, question in here, what Albert. What do the cards uh, smell like? What do the cards smell like? This is hmm. actually a valid question. Like, it's kind of silly, but this is a valid question. This is part of the experience of opening packs like reading comic books, uh, having a book. What does it smell like, Albert? Yeah. Give us, I, you a, know, give us your honestly, impressions. I, and all joking aside, like if you grew up reading like with physical media, this is what this was a thing. Like <laughs> at least for me, it was. Uh, it probably started back when we used to get Xerox copies in elementary school, and there was a high that natural oh, high came from it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this smells. Uh, it's pretty good. Like I, I don't know what kind of wood they've used or paper product they've used, but. Uh, it's got a good inky smell to it, so I definitely approve of it. Well, so talk about yeah, and and uh, Greg, tell me too the texture of these cards. Is it is it a matted texture? Is it a glossier finish? Like, what's the actual finish of these cards? It does have a glossy finish to it. Um, it feels it feels like what I would expect as far as like a Magic or a Pokemon. You've got rounded corners. Um, it, it it really kind of you know, and like I said, I think I think this goes with the artwork well. I think it's a nice match. And of course, if you look back at Destiny or you look at back at the the deck building game where you see like the more realistic type ones, obviously, you know, the art in all these is really cool. Uh, and I like in this case where they take a lot of, you know, liberties with posing and things like that. So it's not common stuff that we'd expect to see. Like a lot of times in the comics where you would see like a Han Solo and you would see an expression that looked like Han, you know, like Harrison Ford from a movie. But in this case, you know, they really, you know, you're seeing some liberties taken and some nice, you know, takes on this. Um, and even in this case where these were not characters from, but uh, so they had a lot, of, they had a lot of room. They had a lot of leeway. And of course, this probably would have had to been um, blessed by Lucasfilm before it hit, hit a card for production. So right. um, good for us because we got a lot of nice artwork. Absolutely. Another foil card, hard point, mm. heavy blaster. Attached to a vehicle unit. It's a vehicle upgrade. Very nice. So I know most serious players would probably put these in a in a sleeve, but do these right. show fingerprints very easily, or is that a, would that be a concern of yours if you were I, doing more casual play? I would say if you go into your shop, I would expect to see it in a sleeve, and the sleeves are actually probably some of the most the least expensive accessories you can get. I think earlier I showed like you know you had like a deck box, which the nice thing about this was there was actually a separate. Um, compartment for your um, like the damage counters and whatnot. Oh, nice. So in this case, there was a separate little one. And then I think in this case, when you popped it out, it would um, stay open. Mm. They said that was a thing. And then, but you've got like bigger boxes if you want to have like multiple decks and things. But I thought this was a nice start. 
Uh, and you could even mark like, I guess, what what's in here. But in this game, you can see there's a couple different compartments in there. Um, but then, you know, you can kind of grow to like bigger ones. And so this was like eight bucks. And then um, will actually, that accommodate will that accommodate a sleeve as well? Or is that just big enough for the card? Mm, let's see. That's a good question. No, no, it, it would it would take a sleeve. It okay. would take a sleeve there. That's always um, a big selling point. Yeah, they've, they've got to be able to accommodate sleeves these days. And the, the sleeves of this game do look sharp, by the way. They, they are good-looking cards. I think they've got two types. And I would expect to see more. And you're also going to have um, oh. sleeves from previous Star Wars releases. Yeah. So you're going to have star a lot of Star Wars-themed stuff already out there for some of the other games because the cards are going to be the same size. And by the way, I got a set of tokens off of Etsy uh, because once people start, like, in the starter kit, they're going to have, like, the little cardboard pop-out damage counters and whatnot. But, you know, if you go to Etsy, you can find a lot of, like, people who 3D print uh, some cool things and damage counters and little trays and whatnot. And it's a nice way to support makers out there and have something a little different when you go to your local card shop. And I don't, I have no idea when I'm getting it. It's, it's Etsy. But um, just something a little different that um, is just not as common, so you can roll in there. Good. Uh, all your, was, with all your fancy foils. Yeah, Dante was asking if we were showing the rares and legendaries, and yes, we're we're kind of showing the uh, the hyperspace. And leave that up for a second. Right um, if you kind of bring it in close, on the right hand side bottom, you're going to see next to where you have the card number at. Uh, yeah, he's got to go to the other side of that. But they'll be your, like your other left. <laughs> your other left. <laughs> what in the world here? All right, hold on here. Let me do this. Take my word for it. On the lower right hand side, next to the card number, right. Oh, you had it there for a second. You were so close. Pull it towards you. Uh, down. Pull it pull towards it me. Towards there you go. go. Perfect. So you can see here where this says common. So the C. And trust me, if you're trying to look at it, you better have young eyes because I can't tell. But you have common, rare, you know, legendary and whatnot. So. If you get your, get a magnifying glass, if if you're above forty, and trust me, you'll be able to see the rarity of those there. Next, we'll see what gets in this pack here. Another Chewbacca leader card. I don't think I have this one. It's the first time I've seen it actually. Mm. System Patrol Craft. I mean, probably not four. the coolest card, but you know, it's a four. It's a four, yeah. Oh, and that's interesting. I pulled this. I did pull a hyperspace card in this one. I just well, well, nearly oh, just tossed nice to the side. Oh, yeah. Upside down, but yeah. So that was cool. And then the foil on this one is, uh, we've seen this card a few times now, but this is the uh, Yoda. So notice a different Yoda. So the other Yoda he pulled could be used with this because it's, it's although it's the same character, it's different. It's a different type of Yoda card. Yeah. And to be clear, I haven't, uh, outside of this card, this is the only one I've gotten so far out of two boxes. Um, that's a showcase hyperspace. So I will bring the other Yoda card over and let's look at the rarity of that one real fast. Can I FedEx you a top loader for that? <laughs> <laughs> You're really making him nervous, Albert. <laughs> I know. What, what do you Just want me to do? Just protecting your yeah. investment. Bring it up. Bring it up to screen. Closer. Closer towards you. To your left now. <laughs> your other yeah. left. Keep going. Getting I want to see that bottom warmer, area. Warmer. Ooh. All right. So can't quite. I think it's uncommon. Uncommon. So that's uncommon. Yeah. So the U. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there we go. Oh, all right. I wasn't really listening, but now that, that actually makes sense. Yeah, so why don't you start over from the very first pack, oh, and no, we'll go back goodness. through these for Dante. Yeah. So let's get that Boba Fett again, and then we're going we're gonna to wince every I'm time so he holds old. it. Like, my back is hurting. Like, I'm tired of standing up. I just want to. I just want a nappy time. That's all. all. Right, so Dante is saying that, so another uh, seasoned veteran here, second to last card is always a rare or legendary. He's already spent too much on this game, so there we go. We are Seriously making... protect that card. Yes, Dante, I'm... Yes. And yes, he is everybody is now on edge, Albert, of your uh your your coffee mug. Uh, well, I was eating coaster fried chicken card. for dinner and I've been touching all these cards, so I don't know what that's gonna do to the value. Right. And he's got a chocolate chip cookie just next to it, right? Yep. Double fudge, you know, it's chocolate all over the place. Come on, guys. Oh, here we go. Look at that one. Very nice. The I ghost. Like ghost. This one. There you go. It's a four. Chef's kiss. That one. And my favorite chip. And what's rarity on that one? No, oh, cheese. Are you doing that just to other way towards you? Uh, towards me. There you go. Uncommon. 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 Fifty right. out of two fifty-two. That even shows you the rate, huh? That's a, that's awesome. I have to let's, go back and look at all these. Well, that's just the card number. The card number. Oh, I thought that was a right. yeah. It's just number fifty. Yeah, there's two hundred fifty-two in the set. Not how much you're gonna get on eBay for it. Yeah, Dante said that he has pulled a showcase shirt. <sighs> Ooh. And it was in a top, top loader three, three seconds, seconds later. My man. <laughs> 
What is a top three loader? What does that mean? Oh, a top, top loader. loader. It's just mean? a, you know, the the, you know, the the plastic card holders. You just, you, you load from the top. Oh, like the one, yeah. I, have, like a, I had the like, Boba Fett in there. I he just, just refuses to do it just to piss everybody off and make everybody worry. Fine, we'll do it here live on the air. Watch, top here we go. Watch him bend it. There. Oh, there we go. Can you can you give it a little love tap so it's securely down there, please? Yeah, get it. Oh my God! No. Why are you doing? Oh, Albert, no, you gosh. don't. Top loaders. <laughs> Use my right. knowledge, I beg of you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, well, well played there. <laughs> Dante, send us a picture of that on Discord so we can post it. Man. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see more. Penny sleeve first. Baby steps, Dante. Just protect that card. And, yeah. Hey, Alex, look at this. I got a foil rook for, just for you, buddy. Oh wow. And he's not going to put it in a foil loader. He's just going to send nope. it in an envelope to you. Yep. Plain white envelope. All right, we're coming down to the bottom of the second box here. By the way, so. so there we go. Fantastic. Let's see what else we get here. Yeah, most of these are all the same cards at this point. I'll highlight anything that's I haven't picked already or pulled in either this box or the other. And just remember, you can have three of any of those uh, of a lot of those cards. So even if you're pulling dupes there in go. some Juggernaut. of these boxes, yeah. oh, right I'm on point from last week's episode. All right. So all right, uh, another question for you here, Greg. As Albert uh, gets to the bottom of this box here. What color cryble, kyber crystal would call to you? Mm, I would have to say yellow. And why is um, that? And it's not because it's just the color of my iMac. Um, <laughs> it is the color of my iMac. Um, I liked the Jedi Temple Guard um, color. I thought it was uncommon. I mean, how do you how do you go wrong with a purple a purple kyber crystal? But I do think the the yellow one, uh, much like the the iPods Nanos that that came out when I first started at Apple. <laughs> and they were yellow and, and orange. I like the uncommon colors. And so I would say, um, I think yellow is the, is, is the crystal I would take. That's a, that's a good choice. It's not one that you hear very often. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yes. Saw... Put, put my podcast in your playlist. Also not, also not referred to much often either uh, in, in, in the oh, podcast please. circle. So there we go. Oh, please <laughs> go check out rebel base podcast, rebel base card podcast. There we Again, go. it's a lot Feels of words. <laughs> Another Ooh. five years, I swear you guys will get this. No, I'm Trey Torres. Oh, there's Boy, there, there's a there's a uh, ominous one for coming up, right? Tales oh. of the Empire. Mm hmm. And a foil, so that's cool. Yeah. What are All your right. thoughts on Tales of the Empire, Greg? Last pack. Go on, Dustin. I love it. I I love the fact that they, you know, like there's a there's a mechanism of that animation that's in place. And that they can tell different kind of tales. You know, can you imagine like if you had a a yearly series where it was just not necessarily tied to one set of characters, but you could tell just Star Wars stories? And you know, you know how to do it. You've got a cadre of voices. Uh, but I like the fact they're doing something a little different this year. And like just like the old comics, right, where you had like tales of Jabba's palace and all that. Right. Let's have at it. Let's have some fun with it. And you know, oh, but not Amanda. have to tie in like a full series of sixteen to that. You know, don't box yourself in with the great animation that we've come to love with Bad Batch that's, you know, come over from Clone Wars. Here's a place where you can use it. It's going to be, you can crank out all different kinds of stories, but don't be afraid to like pull a resistance or rebels where you're doing something different and breaking new ground. You know, like Visions does kind of show you that there's a lot of different ways to do it. But um, I would say I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I don't think we'll do a show per se because, um, kind of these one and done it's kind of hard to do the questions on it because there's not going to be any more from that but um maybe we'll have to do like a trailer or a recap once it's done nice i'm gonna go off a little off script though on you and this is a this is i think along the lines of where you were going is what how would you feel about a what if star wars series mm. i know you you guys were talking about that on the cantina cast i have advocated and... for this thing for probably four years now so we even did a what if episode that Albert was not really keen on doing in the first place. And we've not revisited Albert just saying, you can come back to that. But yeah, what do you think about a what if? Like we, we've seen it with Marvel, of course, and it's been wildly successful with Marvel, two seasons of it. There's rumors that maybe there's going to be a Star Wars. What if there's the Lando Calrissian leader? Card I have that the, card. Or, it's that's the nice ground card, card, rather. Ground card. I'm of two minds because I know the what if comics and some of that first season of what if like everything ended miserably 
And it's one of those where it's like, and the world died. And, you know, I thought what I liked about part of like season two of what if was the fact that there was seemed to be some lighter moments. And I would say if you could do it without, you know, I, I think there's some stories you could explore, but I think as we always look for new star Wars to give us new canon, or at least tie up some loose ends, I would say there's a lot of work, a lot of water they have to carry that I would say, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to give me some some what ifs, I hope there's some other stuff out there. Oh, man, chariots on another card. So I would say I'm sort of lukewarm to it. I'll take it. But I would rather have some, you know, like because that almost kind of reminds you of like a legend story. Right. Um, it'd be interesting if you did take some of those legends and made it. What if um, just to kind of bring those back? Who is that? Uh, I think it's Sorry. Vader. Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. It's definitely not Vader. Uh, so Dante is saying that that mace was a legendary card, by the way. This was a legendary card? Yeah. You should hold it up a little closer to the camera towards you <laughs> and up and your You'll left. Get there. Yeah. Let's see the very bottom. Oh, right, stop crash. it. You're just taunting me now again. No, it's he's easy. So close. He's so close. He's so close. Yes. He's there got a go. legendary, legendary card, kids. 149 out of 252. There you go. Ding, ding. Yeah. Great call, Dante. I wouldn't have known. So many, so many amazing trash. cards you didn't realize you've had. You've got a whole stack of legendary there. <laughs> and later with a magnifying glass. I think that's an L. You We're going to get only crucified by the, by the, like. Like the, the harder core card circles. <laughs> These clowns don't know what they're doing. I know. There's people laughing at us. What? Oh, hey, look at this guy. Ooh, this is look at that. That's cool looking. Wilderness fighter. Yeah, what's the rarity on that one, Albert? <laughs> it's common. It's common. Whoa, it's coming right I'm at me. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. And it's coming right for me. And there's General Dodonna. Uh, General Dodonna. Foil. That was uh, uncommon, I believe. Yeah. Fen Rao. Ooh. All right. Uh, oh. Yeah. I mean, you, you talk about oh, what if, and when we had, oh, there's Han Solo leader card. This looks like the uh, Han Solo from, from the holiday special. From the holiday, holiday special. special. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're flirting with some dangerous territory here. Yeah. I like that. Who says there isn't callbacks in this? All right. Right. And speaking of callbacks and what if, some people may remember the Star Wars Infinities uh, comic series, the, the graphic, I think they, uh. they came out as graphic novels later on. And, you know, those were really fantastic stories. Again, the same premise of, there you go, beautiful card with no borders. Just the way, with, just like we like them around here. Uh, but yeah, you know, if one thing changed, one thing was different, right. you know, that whole scenario, which is always fantastic. I like the idea, though, of bringing, it's a way I think that you could bring back some legend stories and maybe not necessarily retell legends but even put a new spin on what was a legend story and have some fun with it and i think honor some of that material there you go jen urso leader card yeah it's a way you can kind of bring in the twins from han and leia and kind oh, of tell a story good. around them instead of you know kylo i mean not not to bag on kylo ren but you could you know um but you could try you know, like mara jade and some of that um you know bring in dark empires you, know, you could really have some fun but i i would like to tie it in to have it something that we go okay instead of like going down well what if luke didn't blow up the death star but what if what if something we could bring back in that'd be fun i think that would you know bring back in some legend stuff and you know clue some new folks into maybe going back and seeing some some characters that were already created Ooh, shiny yeah bring back that uh that Jen Urso leader card albert that was a uh, frameless there. Good looking card. There you go. Noise. Yeah, that's a penny, Albert. You're getting there, buddy. I looked it You're up. Well on your way to making your money back. All right. How many more are you going to rip there, bud? I, I plan on going until Greg says I'm done. I'm tagging out. Tagging well, I've, got, out. I've got, I've got, there's still, there's still questions on this list that I've got some funny answers to. So right, or at least well, what I think are funny. And we could, we could stick around Jonesy if you want. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I got nothing to do, but open these things. All right. So let's, well, I just want to make sure we're appeasing Dante here with making sure we're getting, <laughs> I like that. Ah, uh, it's nice. I mean, that's totally unrealistic with how close <laughs> they are, but still. Like, that's it's a dead clone for sure i'd say it reminds me it actually reminds me of like the heavy trooper from uh the uh, uh kotor video game or uh, i guess yeah kotor right yeah a little he's bit. in swotor uh swotor there we go that's what i was looking for whatever all, they're all the same no one no one cares 
<laughs> Except that part. <laughs> I'm glad I'm on mute. Um, your daggers are like words, man. Words are like daggers, I, say. I like it when you just had to take it. You can't even respond. I know. I just, I just was sitting there let the my silence tongue linger. with the zero the cut comments. And... Kids, this is what's known as pulling dupes. Yeah. A lot of dupes here. Lots and lots of dupes. That base Malbus I hadn't seen. Oh, wait a minute. We have, did we have uh, Jetta City? Uh, that is Jetta City, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, I haven't seen that one yet. That's nice. And what's the, that's a, that's, that's a, a little, that's got a color down there. Is that a rare? rare? A little closer, Robert, a little closer, a little down <laughs> to your right. I think, uh, I think Jurgens is, 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 uh, is an answer to a question that has been asked yet. Sorry. Jurgens is a question. A little lotion. If, if you could have a pint with any Star Wars character, who would it be? It would be Jurgens. Thank you for asking me this. Yes. Because um, I thought long and hard about this, and I'm going to say Sergeant Linus Mosk from Andor. Oh. <laughs> One, yes. the guy knows how to put it back, but two, it, what I loved about that character was the fact that, you know, he was he was certainly, like, past his prime, but he was just so earnest about it. And I just love the fact that, you know, you, you know someone out there. You may work with somebody who go, you know what? The guy's just a bit of a talker, but he means well. But I just love the fact that, you know, like he, you know, he knew what he was doing, especially in, in the, you know, when they were trying to trap and or early. But it just, you know, he's sitting out there and then he'd have to kind of hit the flask. And then at the end, you know, when everything's kind of done. Uh, so I thought, you know what? He'd have some great stories. Yeah, it's sad, too. We're not going to get him back in season two, by the way. Mm. He's, he's already come out and said his character was not written in season two. So. <clears throat> Unfortunately. That's, good. That's another good deep cut. Albert, bring back that uh, uh, the other card. Uh, Hera Syndulla? Is, yeah, the Hera card. Yeah, we've got a Hera leader Ooh, card here. Ooh, leader unit. Now, that'd be a nice hyperspace foil, I'd tell you that much. That's a rare. Yep. Not going to pull it towards me, but uh, I can see the color. <laughs> I can see the gold, yeah. Yep. <laughs> gold on it. <laughs> He's Excellent. also, by the way, that actor, I forget his name. I posted this on social media. He shows up in Godzilla uh, versus Kong, the more recent movie that's mm. just come out. Uh, he plays he, almost the exact same character, unfortunately, <laughs> but he's really good at that character. I, I'll say that. So, you've got like four Sabine Rams. Sabine Rams. So many yeah. Sabine Rams. You've there's, got there's some a lot of, bit. I mean, there's a lot of Rebels content, which I think you would expect with Spark of the Rebellion as the name of this set, right? But yeah, I've got a absurd amount of Rebels cards at this point. Can't believe those were. Oh, here's one that I haven't gotten yet. I don't know if it's any good. Rogue Operative. That's a new one for me. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, nope. This way, I oh, forget it. I'm just gonna look at it. It's uh, it's so common. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Well oh, done. look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, cane and foil. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, there we go. How much, That's... Greg? Let me know right now. Is that before rare? I lick it? I'll pay you five dollars. <laughs> five dollars. So that's a ground. That's a ground unit, I guess, right? Uh, this one. Uh, let's see. This was a yes, ground unit. As I lift my glasses up, because I am over forty. Yeah. There you go. Very nice. Yeah, that's a sharp looking card. It is cool. It has chicken finger, chicken grease all over it already. Yeah. Never heard of the character though. Her pose is good. Uh, heard he needed a haircut. There's a uh, slight little reference to Kanan Jarrus, believe it or not, in. Uh, the, um, uh, the Living Force by John Jackson Miller. Oh, really? Yep. I won't tell you how or why or anything else. It's not a huge spoiler by any means, but it's just a very sweet little nod to that character. Oh, is that? Oh, this is a new one, too. Yeah, that's this new. Guy here. Yeah. What is that? Cartel, Cartel Spacer. Spacer. That is uncommon. Common, yeah. Uncommon, yeah. Oh, and by the way, Shadows of the Galaxy is the next release uh set and that's going to have i think moff gideon and some more mando in it but that comes out another another set of 250 cards um put your case pre-orders in now albert uh, um, I, will. I will let's see your cards will include phase three dark trooper gideon's light cruiser and the grogu unit card hmm. very cool i think that should come out in july and you said that's another oh there you go repair oh man that is Oh man, that's Hyper sick. Yeah, hyperspace foil. Luke getting work done. I like mm -hmm. that. What's the rarity on that one, Albert? Uh, I don't know. Can't. I already put it down. I can't find it anymore. Uh, let's like one of the best cards in the batch. <laughs> like it for a while, and oh, you're right. not even giving it the care right. and attention it's and a recognition. Common card. Common card. It's 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 rare in our hearts, though. It is. 
It there's a new good. rarity called zero. I think the Z. If you see a Z, Z I R O is the new rarity. <laughs> Ugh. I'm just going. Like, here's another uh, foil rook card. Oh, there you go. You got to dupe to trade your brother now. Oh, uh, that. Oh, oh I don't have that. The Catacombs of Kadera. Oh, I've got that one. Jutter, there you go. It's a, a hyperspace. Cool. I like that. Is that a is that a base card? Mm. Yes. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Base card. Crap, 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 crap. He's a breaker now. Crap. He's a breaker. There like, are probably like three legendaries in there. <laughs> Dante's know. having an aneurysm. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. Nope. Another Boba Fett. Uh, let's see. What That's why they call them trading cards, kids. Uh, there you go. Resupply. A little Hera and Sabine. Yeah, we're just going for the foils at this point. Sorry, Dante. We're not looking at any of the legendaries. I'm sure there's some in here, and I'll probably be selling them like a schmuck for. So when I get my yeah, I'll, I'll be curious when I get my hundred card, uh, you know, common uncommon lot, because even in the description was like you know I didn't bother to sort some of them, and I'm like ooh okay, <laughs> I mm -hmm. want to see what you skip, what you accidentally put in this lot. Look at this, that's a cool Aww. one. Ah, tie defender, tie defender, and it's a foil. Nice. When you play this unit, Throng cries just a little bit. Oh, man. So Dante is saying the R and L are usually the cool characters. But you do you. But you do you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking for the shiny stuff, man. Like this guy right here. Like I got a little shiny land. Yeah. You have a long you have a long future in card ripping. Yeah. You know exactly <laughs> how, how to do this. Yeah. I mean, these at some point, I'll come back and revisit these and figure out which are... No, and, and in Albert's defense, like if I were doing this, I would probably be taking entirely too long looking at every single card front and back. So you're doing a great job, Albert. Keep, you know, you know keep mm. at it. No good oh, to me, dead. That's that is fun. That's a uncommon. No good to me, dead. Han Solo and Carbonite. In a foil. This is as close as you're getting to a Geode card. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I wish they. I wish they would do a High Republic set. Uh, that way, I would sink some money. Hey, if the sure. if the game lasts long enough, who knows? You might just have. Yeah. Of course, we're gonna. The, uh, you know, we're gonna Apple get Acolyte. Help it too, right? With the error and all, but. So. Yeah, it could be a two two sets. Who so, said uh, we won't see Geode in the Acolyte? Yeah, Greg, you were saying about the next set. Is that another? Is another two hundred fifty cards? Is that what you mm -hmm. said? Okay. So we're gonna double the size here in July. I think you'll see new starter boxes. So those, like I said, are running around 30-ish. And then you'll see boxes of boosters. Or, you know, if you, if you get there early enough, you can get single packs of boosters, which I think most sane people would say, like, I just want to get, you know, like a starter box and a few boosters. Um, and like I said, you can get the starter box now. You can get it online through FFG or some stores will, some stores will have, online stores will have it, Amazon will have it. If you just want to try it out, you're going to get everything you need to play the game. You get two decks, you'll get the the mat, you'll get damage counters and the, and the rules, most importantly. Right. And, you know, you can kind of play it, and those decks are going to be, you know, fully playable decks. And you'll kind of see the construction of, like, you'll see, you know, the leader base, and then it'll be, like, X number of ground units, X number of space units. You'll see, like, in sets of threes, which seem to be kind of, like, pretty standard across most games. And then that way, like if you get a couple of boosters, you can kind of like slip in or if you want to like take like, hey, I want to try another leader um, or because there are those six aspects, there's a lot of different deck possibilities. That's, That's a great your... point. Yeah, I mean, and, and often the, you know, the starter kits aren't always, they're kind of passed over every once in a while. But I think yeah, if you just want to get your feet wet and look at the game mm -hmm. and then, it, oh, there you go, a regional regional governor. governors. I like that, though. Yeah. You'll know, get your feet wet, not put a lot of money into it until you figure out if it's what you want to do. There we go. Snowtrooper Lieutenant in a foil. I like that. Very cool. You know, great way to it's a great way to do it and to just you know, check it out and you know, grab if you've got a if you're if you have a family member or a friend that's just really into it and you want to try something new, you know, go grab it and and, and see what you think. And like you said, it does come with some extra goodies too. So you've got everything mm -hmm. you need to get started and and everything, uh, everything there to get rolling. Another add at suppressor. And if you find you like you, you like playing it, but you there there isn't you know you can't really find that you know grok this particular game. Uh, go back to the decipher game because when decipher kind of lost the license, they turned it over to what they call the players council, which is this is a group, this is a nonprofit group, and they keep the game going. And so they're still playing it. They're having tournaments. A friend of mine, Sam Tashima, 
you know, just recently won a regional tournament uh, and they, you know, they make new cards that you can put in there. And so that, that game is alive and well years after officially it came to a close. And so that's when, you know, like a game has some teeth to it that has, you know, a very dedicated group of gamers. And I hope that, you know, for fantasy flight game, you know, games, I want to see something have some legs to it so that, you know, five, 10 years from now, people are still playing it and it's still a great game. Yeah, and I think we, and the, the good news is I think you may have brought this up earlier with with Fantasy Flight games. You know, you've got the backing behind it. You're, you're going to have some longevity to it. You know, the game is going to, they aren't going to just can it after six months and it, it was a flop or whatever. They're going to try to work and take feedback and make it better and improve mechanics if they're needed. And wow, here we go, Echo Base. Mm. That's a nice base card. That's a new one. We haven't seen that one. I like, man, that's cool. Of course, anything on Hoth is is worth extra money in my opinion exactly uh, but now you if know, you notice if, we, you know we go FMG's back he's not gonna get rid of it yeah well and in which case i think you know with some of their earlier games you know you you want to have um you want to have this being enjoyed and, and played so that you know yeah, if a license sad. comes up they still want to keep it going because right. you know like the the legion right the miniature game that really caught fire and they've been that they've been doing that for a while and so that's ooh. Yeah, Albert just pulling a Zeb card. Stephanie's asking in the chat. Are we supposed to add, be asking Greg questions too. Greg is here for your enjoyment, ladies and gentlemen. If you have questions for Greg, you know, please do put them in the chat. We will highlight them. We would love to ask them. Hey, you know what? Before we go any further, here's a fun little thing I can do. So, this is I have all the foils and everything from my the deck that I've not opened yet. So let me run through those real quick, and you guys just stop me if you want me to, if you want to see anything. Hold on, look, that's not where they start. Uh, they start here. Like nice job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, i'm sure i'm sure they're great i'm sure they're great yeah, see these cards that you can't see that you can't see right there you yeah. go oh here we go waylay the hyperspace foil relentless oh man that's beautiful already got that one these are hyperspace i like the hyperspace way more and then yeah, we get oh the, i like that hyperspace Bosque. foil cards that I that's pulled. a nice boss yeah Bosque. does he have a backside on him no he does not no no um, that's a good looking card too yep yeah, that one there Volunteer soldier. soldier. ISB. I like that ISB agent. This was what was this one? Security complex. That's a base. Oh, so scarab base. And yeah. you know, some of them have you know thirty. Some of them have twenty five. So probably depending upon how you want to build your deck. But something that that Albert might want to do is like you know he take maybe he initially he takes and puts all the foils aside, and then maybe he starts to kind of organize the rest by color, and then within that color you can start to go. All right, do I have leaders? Do I have ground units? um space units events upgrades and this is going to kind of help him start to kind of build decks because he's going to start seeing like with here you're going to start seeing the aspects the combinations that are more common and then you're going to say well maybe i want to build a deck around cheer it uh, which are actually on on fantasy flight games website for star wars limited there was a deck that was built around cheer it and so you can kind of see that yeah um uh, all these are I, i've got a couple here leader cards that are hyperspace so I've got the Sabine Wren hyperspace. Oh, nice. And then I've got IG. IG apparently is not one of the, the more powerful leader cards. I think that's one of the only things that kind of stuck in my head. Oh, Grand Inquisitor and hyperspace. Mm -hmm. Very I nice. wouldn't mind building a deck around him. Very and nice. notice also that Tarkin and Leia had the same aspect as leaders. So not just, you know, don't, don't peg like, oh, if it's all green, it's all, you know, Imperial or something like that. So, or in that case, red looked, you know, evil, but then Sabine oh. is red. So. So you could have Sabine with this one because it's it's more of an aggression type deck. Yeah, that, that event card was really, really mm -hmm. something. And these are more um, hyperspace cards that I opened up from the first, the very first deck we did before tonight. See this this is the stack that's going to get Albert his money back. <laughs> I was I felt pretty fortunate. Like there was a lot more. It feels like there would have been a lot more in that deck in that box alone than any of the other boxes so far. But I could be wrong. Hyperspace yeah. guards are the best. You're right, Dan. They Dante. are. They look so good. Those. Okay, that's all I had. I think. I think I went through the rest of these here. Well, there's a. I, I didn't go through all my foils, or maybe I did. I no, I did not. You need to get that Kylo Ren in a foil. That would look sharp. I got the uh, little forces with me in a foil. Mm. I just like that one a lot. So, okay, I'm gonna go back to continue opening question or uh, cards here. <laughs> All right, so here's another question for you, Greg. All right. All right, so you, Albert, and I are, are going to have a throwdown 
action figures back in the mid-80s, 1984 style. You get to pick your top three figures for the battle. Ooh. Who are you going to pick? Well, first, I got to throw Han Solo in there because that was the first Kenner figure I got. And I had like the small head uh, Han Solo, not not the, the one with the abnormally large head. Um, I think Boba Fett because Boba Fett was a cool fig. You know, first the, the one where he had to mail in, but he's got the most weapons. And I think just because Chewbacca, Chewbacca has muscle and I really liked um, they didn't necessarily give him the bowcaster per se, but they gave him a, a weapon that did hang on his arm. So I think those are going to be my top three right there. Nice. Oh, we geez. asked that question of uh, Adam Christopher, and I don't remember what what his his answer was, honestly. But yeah, you're right. That Boba Fett character was the the figure was the first figure that everybody one of the first figures that everybody would try to grab immediately if it was uh, up for play. You know, right. Very cool. All right, weapon of choice: an uncivilized bat blaster or an ancient lightsaber. Ooh. As much as I like that DL forty four, I think I would go with an ancient lightsaber. I mean, you kind of have to, right? I think yeah. It's the only answer. It, it's just kind of the only answer. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, who shot first, Han or McClunky? Han shot first. Don't okay. even don't even get me started on that one. Oh, Dagobah Swamp Base. Very nice. It's like 30 because you got to find Yoda. It's so hard to find him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's the bigger creeper? Who gives you the bigger creeper vibes? Maz Kanata. Ja Jabba the Hutt or, or <laughs> Maz Kanata. And I'm going to throw a third one in here just to make it a little interesting. Pelimoto. Oh, that's Jeez. not fair. You know, I would say, where's Salacious Crumb? Because that that character always kind of gave me the creeps. He's yeah, I hungry. agree with that. He's just hungry. I don't, I don't think that, you know, I don't know what he's hungry for, but still. Moment Keep of silence character. for the voice of Salacious Crumb, whose name's escaping me at the moment, but yeah, I know he passed away. Yeah, we've, we've lost a lot of good ones this year already. So it's, it's tough in the Star Wars family there. Uh, so which one? Kanata, Job of the Hut, or Pelimoto? Mm, creeper? The popular, the popular choice probably is Maz. Uh, if I want to get, if well, I want to get wanna... invited back on the Cantina cast, I'll say Maz. Oh, don't worry about <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, if you're smart, you'll say Maz. <laughs> right. Uh, which would you rather date, uh, Salacious B. Crumb oh, or a Jawa? On. That's not a question. <laughs> He's off script and gone rogue. That is not Awful in there. Old Jawa or never mind. <laughs> uh, Steph says disgusting. the Steph says the monkey thing. Is uh, with Java is the creepiest thing in Star Wars, yeah. Quacky and monkey lizards. Monkey lizards you yeah. know, I, I think I've shared this story before, but it bears sharing once again. Jawas would mate in public, like out there, wide open for everybody to watch and see and smell. Uh, and so, well, they're uh, very furry, so you really can't see much. Yeah, so. that, that well, that was a revelation. Thank you, Pelly. See, series. we've learned so many things. I think you've lost your G rating already. Yeah, we're, we're actually people are dropping off the show already. <laughs> can see it happening in real time. There's Mon Mothma in the foil. Nice. I don't have her. Oh. Very nice. Ground unit. All right. Do you have a favorite lightsaber battle, Greg? Favorite lightsaber battle. You know, for a long time, I would say you would have to say Duel of the Fates, right? You have to say Maul and uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. But I have to say that um, the Maul Ahsoka at the end of the Clone Wars, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. doing doing the live action where you get to see them do the mocap. Okay. Um, yeah. And you see, for whatever reason, Ray, Ray, you know, Ray Park kind of like doing that stutter step. Um, maybe just to say like, aha, you're gonna have to capture this. But I would say that was a really great, uh, lightsaber battle. Yeah. You really can't go wrong. There's so many in the clone wars. Like, so one of my favorites is still the emperor facing Savage Press and Darth oh. Maul and just the, the cackling and the, he's just toying with them toying at that with point. Them the entire time. So much fun. Of course, Luke and Vader at the end of Jedi is, is always emotional and powerful in its own way. It, it's almost an unfair question. There's so many good lightsaber fights for very different reasons there's kind of one for all walks of life agreed how many sabine wrens has he pulled a lot he got <laughs> like four or five i think just tonight all right steph's got a question for you that we can actually uh, deem as somewhat appropriate what is your favorite tin hat star wars theory mm. do you have one right which of albert's countless star wars <laughs> theories <laughs> seems the most plausible yeah I've, I actually have a question later that's a tinfoil hat theory question for him, by the way. Somehow Palpatine has returned? Is <laughs> <the fellow? laughs> are there any out, if there, are there any outlandish theories that you would you would kind of subscribe to or you think are, this is a little bit, again, unplanned, so a little unfair, but anything come to mind? That... We've talked about this on the show, and I was trying to think of just putting the stuff out there, but I, I would love to see, you know, like I said, when you're talking about, like, you know, like with, 
Snoke and with you know the Emperor being cloned and things like that. I mean, I guess it's coming more Ooh, and more true. Black one, black Check one, that out, card. Nice. Yeah, man, nice hyperspace foil. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt with black one, but I had to show it. So, yeah, that was no, a good looking card. And I think that's one of the first we've seen pulled. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I have too many like out of you know like off the top of my head. Um. I lose track of them. Albert's got yeah. so many these days. I don't know. Every once in a while, something comes true, and then we forget. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Where did you stand, Greg, on the whole, did Palpatine create Anakin Skywalker, or was that just kind of a, a vision? Do you have an opinion on that? I think it's hard to... I mean, it would be... What would the ramifications be if it did? You know, you sort of think like, well, I guess if we went through Dune, right, and you have all the the uh, the Bene Gesserit that have been kind of like selectively breeding for over, you know, generations and generations in order to produce the chosen one. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you, nice. you, you know, when you think about like Anakin was supposed to bring balance to the Force, and that you know Anakin was produced without having you know without having a father, and you start to go. You know, would it be better? Would, would you feel better if it was chance, or would you feel? How would you feel if it was true that Palpatine had had engineered that, or figured out how to engineer that? And I guess we're gonna. I mean, we'll be finding out because you know we're talking about uh, with Omega and what her midichlorian count means and what she's going to be able to do, and you know, and all that. But um, yeah, if if Anakin was engineered to 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 assist with um, Palpatine, I guess I'd feel better if it, he wasn't. And if it was just sort of the force kind of created it as opposed to, you know, yeah. engineered by Palps, who's going to, who apparently, you know, you could blame him for everything else at this point. I mean, what, what hasn't he had his hands in, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So to go back to that black one, Albert Dante did say it was a legendary Ooh. and I, I did a quick look up and for a foil, I think the value is around $25 on the market right now. Yeah. It's somewhere on the floor. It all adds up, baby. Yeah, probably right next to the boba. Now. Probably right next to the boba fat coming right out the top of the I think I've kicked it with my my foot here a few times now. <laughs> yeah, stepped on it. It's got a nice mark. Leave on. it outside in the rain. You know. Oh, here we go. Look at this. I don't have this one. What is this one? Before I get out. Uh, it's a legendary. I'll check that out. Oh, all right. Of it. Uh, that is force lightning. What does that sell for? We should have had like a running count here where we could just add it. Well, up to it's see. tough to look these things up. Yeah. And that's not. Oh I mean, yes. Yeah. So for your TikTok, you go like, I just spent eight hundred dollars on this, and then it <laughs> slashes out, and then right. yeah, we'll we'll call that one about fifteen dollars, Albert. Okay. Uh, with uh, a non hyperspace. Take it. Well, I mean, I've got to pull a second one in order to actually sell it. Otherwise, I'm not. Oh, now here. we're now we got all the rules. I got to come in Tarkin Town. Tarkin Town. That looks like a is that what a is, legendary is that as a well? rare? It's a rare, rare. Okay. Focus, focus. You gotta put your hand behind it. If you were to take you one go. of those, which Star Wars character are you quizzes? Yeah, what, what would your result be? So, yeah, if you took one of the, which Star Wars, Star Wars characters are you? Which one would show up for you, Greg? If you were to take one of these Star Wars, which, well, which Star Wars character are you quizzes? Yeah. Um, which one do you think, what, what character do you think it'd end up landing on? You know, it's interesting. I think, you know, we'd all like to be cheer it of like of have that faith in that it's going to it's going to work out but we end up being sergeant linus mosk right you kind of fall short there, there's what you hope you what you want to be and then what you end up being so i would say that i would i would endear to be um cheer it and i would end up being mosk all right so everybody wants to know everybody so albert what would your what would your quiz turn out any Star Wars character? No, if you took the quiz for which Star Wars character are you most like, which yeah, one do you think like, you would end up as? Any Star Wars characters in play here? Sure. I mean, you can't be Pelimoto. I'm not going to let you do that. I won't let no. you be Maz Kanata either. So no, let's just take those off heads. the board for now. Let's just get them all out there. Yeah. All my favorites. I already have my answer. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> Balin Skull? No, I'd be Ben Solo because I get all the lines at the end of the movie. Oh, boom. Ah. Man, Jonesy's just swinging like haymakers all night long tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Boy, any character. If I took the quiz, who would I turn out to be? Hmm. Mm. I'm going to go with Sifo Dias. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Because he went crazy? No, well, he went crazy, and he's always like, you know, uh, thinking dies about off screen. Yeah, cockamania <laughs> stuff half the time. I still like that short trooper card. That's, That's nice. That's the second hyperspace foil I think you've got. Is too. it really? 
I think so. I'm glad somebody's that's keeping a, track. That's of a $9 you. card right there, man. All right. That's 18 bucks. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Like, I I would aspire. Like, I great get a better answer. I think it's you aspire to be somebody. I don't know that I would. I mean, I would aspire to be like Luke Skywalker, maybe, or Qui Gon Jinn, one of the two. They're both up there as far as I'm concerned, as far as like mm. who I would want, want to be, even with his faults, right? In The Last Jedi. So. That was a good question. Thanks. Definitely. What about no? Well, no, you're nice not off the hook, but yeah, what's like yours? That. What's yours? I told you I'd be Ben Solo because I want all the we, lines in the movie. Okay, but that's not I want to be I want to be angsty and still get the girl and not have to say anything. Yeah. I mean, no, I think Ben Solo. You know, like when uh, when Kylo does that little shrug before he takes out the rest of the Knights of Ren. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the kind of that's the kind of character you want to be. Like, all right, let's go. Let's just let's just get this over. With. Well, and because someone has to, someone else has got a dog on Albert. We invite his brother Alex. <laughs> Albert yeah, would be that one cool. Ewok being tossed by a stormtrooper in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> but he's still fuzzy and cuddly. Look, I he just is. want to show you this real quick. Look you have to be this. careful. Peli Moto might find him attractive. Check this out. Ooh. Oh, that is quite nice. This is hanging on my wall, by the way. The young Ben Solo. So Who's the artist on that? Uh, it's Adam or uh, Adam Lance. I forget. Oh, my gosh. I'm drawing a blank now. He does amazing art sketches and stuff, but this is actually... I like uh, that. James Hans, that's what it is. James Hans. Uh, go check out his work. But you said the young Ben Solo, and I have those up there. Nice. Uh, I would love to end up like Luke Skywalker, if, uh, I'd, but it'd probably be someone more like a, well, I couldn't be Qui Gon Jim because I'm just not philosophical enough. I'm just not that intelligent. So, but uh, somebody said Yoda. Yeah, no, just um, I, don't I don't like know. the well, menu options on Dagobah. I guess I could be O Yoda, just not show up to anything. That would be yeah, just absent the entire time. Just absent, yeah. Go meditate on this. Oh, I'm gonna go learn something, but then just never, never show up. You're like the one who RSVPs, but just never actually yeah, shows up. The DoorDash fees alone will kill you out there. In <laughs> he's nothing. He's absent. Amazon again. doesn't deliver to Dagobah. I guarantee. No, they do not. That's very true. Not two day shipping. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. I was about to spoil something from Living Force, but I'm not gonna do that. So. All right, folks, we're just looking at foils now. <laughs> we're just looking for foils. Yep, there you go. That's it. How many questions do you still got? Uh, I skipped a few. Let's see here. Uh, oh, look okay, at so, yeah, so, uh, Tim's let's... Got a, Tim's got a question in the chat. Oh, oh, yeah, let's do this. All right, uh, Tim, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, favorite Star Wars non-force using bad guy? Non-force using bad guy. That's a good one. So it could be some Imperials. It could be, I don't know. It could be Krennic. I mean, I guess it's largely, largely Imperials. I'm trying to think of what other yeah, villain characters. Bounty Hunters as well could be in there too. Oh, but yeah. Bounty Hunters would be a good one. I guess they would qualify. I love Cyril Karn from Andor. I oh, love the character. Little... And, you know, it was, it was a fun, it was fun to watch him. And of course, hit mother Edie Karn. <laughs> She is the she's the most evil of all of them, though. I agree. Albert, do you have a favorite non-force using bad guy? Favorite non-force using bad guy? Oh mm. man, I have one that I I don't that I like for just the dumbest reasons, and that's Jodo Cast. Uh, okay. That's a Legends character. He was like the Boba Fett you would get off Wish, if you will. <laughs> um, he shows up in an old West End games role playing game adventure module. Uh, and he's just, you know, ah. he's a funny looking character. He's like a big, he's the epitome of a wannabe Boba Fett and just never really gets there kind of thing. So uh, I like him just because he's got a sad story. But I I think I've always been a Boba Fett fan. I have probably more Boba Fett merchandise than anything else here. So I'm going to say Boba Fett. Oh, look at that. Right on point. Look at that. First card to pull Boba Fett. So, this guy's a pro. I know. And that's, it's, it, that's such a, like a, you know, lame answer because he's such a popular character, but I do like him a lot. Yeah, I'd probably have to go with someone like Cad Bane. I just think he's, I love the gunslinger mm -hmm. aspect. I mean, and the and the voice is just absolutely killer. Uh, he's, I mean, in so many different ways. Just downplay the child trafficking. <laughs> hey, you know, he's just, just making his way through the galaxy. You know, he's just trying to do what he can. So uh, I like the counterpoint to Boba Fett as well. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Crafty smuggler. Okay. So you're caught up on the Bad Batch, right? Uh, right, Greg? Right? Oh, yeah. All right. So what is Omega's future after this season? 
Like, what, hmm. what does she show up in another piece of content? What do you think she goes story wise after this? Like, where do you, where do you think she's headed after this series is over? You know, I, I think a, a lot of folks have kind of gone, you know, because she, you know, we've kind of been told about her M count oh. and whatnot. That sorry to you know, sorry that, to pause you here. We have oh. a unit Bib Fortuna foil. Is that a legendary? No, uncommon. Wow, still that is creepy AF. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, as you were going. Sorry, Greg. sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't think she has a future so much as like a, a Jedi, but I I do think that she bring she has an aspect about her that I would love to see in live action. I don't think they've invested three years to have her kill off or have her, have her story finish, but I, I would love to see her in live action um, or even, you know, like a little older. Cause I do think that, you know, I think, you know, the name that she's given and all that, I, I, I just think that she will, I'd be, you know, she cannot, she cannot not survive the bad badge, but I would love to see her, you know, like maybe she doesn't lead the rebellion, but maybe she goes and kind of does her own thing. Um, but I would, I'd love to see her kind of show up in live action. And I do think that she might have uh, some force ability. I think I've been more kind of sold on that than before. But maybe oh, she doesn't have to lean to it, lean into it. Is there anything in particular that's that's selling you and leaning you that way? Is there anything in particular? I think it kind of makes right sense here, with... You. <laughs> you know, I think the fact that, you know, like... It, it kind of goes back to... Think of um, Obi-Wan Kenobi in A New Hope. When he goes, in my business, there's no such thing as luck. And, you know, just the fact that she's a good shot, that she has had a connection to to like animals or beings. And, you know, I think she's got some innate abilities that, you know, you could say like, oh, they just call it luck. But I do think that there is something there that, you know, we've proven with Ahsoka that, Ooh. you know, that with training and discipline, very nice, that you could unlock some of that. You know, I think with with folks with higher M counts or midichlorians, they would be plucked. You're right. They would be plucked by the, you know, by the Jedi at that point. And, and you know, like uh, exceptional kids because they showed ability without really having to do anything to do it. Right. The, the kid, you know, the kid in one of the, it, you know, throws the, throws the pot and it, you know, breaks them like, well, that's obviously some innate talent, but you know, we can tell it gets unlocked. So I would be interesting that much like with Kanan, right. He was, he had a gun and he also had a lightsaber it'd be interesting to see kind of a hybrid type character where you just didn't have to lean into like, you know, I'm building a lightsaber, but I like, could there be another type of wielder of the force per se that wasn't just cookie cutter? That's a good answer. That's well thought out. It's way better than Albert's theories. <clears throat> oh, I said, she's a Jedi <laughs> already. <laughs> or she's going to be, I said, she's going to end up with, uh, with, uh, Quinlan and Asajj. Quinlan and, yeah, Asajj on the path. And, in some kind of a new oh, steps gonna do, steps gonna make me do this by the way uh while we were you were talking there i did pull another legendary i don't know if dante's with us but uh i don't know what this one's worth but this is they the book ground character ground result look it up it's a ground unit Ooh. Yep. legendary four dollars four dollars well, because it's, in the pack, so because it's not a well, it's just a, a a normal card. Yeah, it's not a foil. Now, if you had that in a, if you had that Chewbacca in a uh, hyperspace, that would be about eighty-five to ninety dollars. Really? And if you had it in a foil, it would be one hundred and fifty. So, yeah, you know, something tells me there's a lot of these cards that are worth way more, and I'm just like flipping right by them. Exactly. Yeah, you probably hey, got hey Jones. <laughs> hey Jonesy, can I can I answer can I half answer a uh, Stephanie question uh, w- with a with a story? Um, this Absolutely. goes back when I worked uh, when I worked in Saipan on the other side of the planet. I did a lot of voice work because uh, I worked for a cable company and we did. I had to do a lot of our promotions, and so I, I figured out very early on that I could add a little bass to my voice, and I wouldn't sound like me. And okay. so our, our cable company had a tagline, you know, Mariana's cable vision, unbeatable. I'm not saying it that way. I'm just saying that's what it was. And so I would go to different radio stations and we would barter, we would trade advertising. So I would get some spots on local radio stations. They would get some spots on ours, but there was a general manager for one of these radio stations. When you would meet up in a bar and he would, he would get drunk a lot. The guy just drank a lot. Good mm-hmm. guy. But just if he saw me and he'd had a few, he would make me do the voice or he would badger me to do the voice, to do the tagline. 
until I did it. So it's almost like, you know, program, <laughs> they like punch the monkey until he gives you the voice that he's looking for. And you're like, ah, that's what I'm looking for. And you're like, all right. <laughs> right. That's why I think about when I saw like, you know, do your emperor voice. And I'm like, I could do an emperor voice, but it is. Well, if, you, if you'd like to share well, it with the, it, yeah. share it with the, uh, share it with the room. <clears throat> so here, so in order to, to finish it out, right. That sounded nothing like him. No, that sounded nothing like him. <laughs> 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 let Sorry, me let me go ahead so for example t t for example like when i first started doing voice stuff you know you would scream out you'd be like all right marios cable vision is the blah 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 you know like all that and you'd add to it and you do a lot of strain but if you're doing a voice like this and you go marianas cable vision unbeatable so that doesn't sound like me does it right no but that didn't really require a lot of just other using that so your hate has made you powerful something like that there you go. Yay. That's pretty good. Nice I like it. I can't do a Chewbacca. So, yeah. Sorry, uh, Tim. Tim said Chewbacca uh, impression. No, can't do it. Yeah. Uh, if 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 Mark Thompson can't do Chewbacca or a Wookiee, and Mark Thompson. I love Mark Thompson. He cannot do Chewbacca. I'm sorry. I love him to death. There's brother, no but... hope for the rest of us either. So he is the best <laughs> Chewbacca, though. <laughs> He's the best. He's the best, and it's, it's not still saying a lot. Good. It's just a low bar. Oh. And Jonesy, man, uh, Stephanie's uh, really putting your feet to the fire. Yeah, no, it's, it, she's being mean to me. <laughs> hey, by the way, hold on. I'm going to show you here before I, before I crack this. Let me see. This is the uh, this is the brand new swag pack. This is like maybe the second or third time I've packed one. I'm still working on the pack art. Uh, for this and by the way Sweet. i do these i do these you know I, I do these giveaways right yeah i've still got my swag packs you gave me yeah i've got the pink one so yep. these are all these are all five uh each year of the podcast we do one so i'm gonna hold on here uh oh we got, got greg ripping packs now now it's getting serious but i wanted to show you the card i think you'd be interested in this one so basically these are highlights throughout the year right of events i've gone to see i'm just like albert right Trying to do this backwards, but yeah, you're doing a much better job, though. Uh, that, these are nice. Uh, the Rebels reunion panel at Nashville. Very cool. But let's see. Yeah, you travel all sort. You travel to a lot of different conventions in the area, right? Artist Jamie Coslin. Last year's national. But this one, let me see if I can get this one. Yeah, checklist card. This one has Jonesy. Yep. Hey, Hawkins. wait a oh. second. I know those people. We have <laughs> Stephanie over here, and then we have Rogazka from Scarf Scalabud. So this is the checklist card. It's very uh, cool. We've been immortalized on this. Yes. Yeah, we've been immor immortalized on the Rubble Base Card podcast. This is card 45. Pack. Card number 45. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of fun. Those will be going out. Uh, these first packs will be going out at C2E2, and I'll make sure you guys... Oh, thank you so much. I'll That's trade awesome. you that card for my Boba showcase. And five Sabines. <laughs> five Sabines. But no top loader. But no yeah, top loader. Top right. on them, sorry. They'll be yeah. they'll be they'll be mailed, you know, just in a plain white envelope. That'll cost you extra. That's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that, Greg. Because you do yeah, and like I was saying, you do go to conventions around the area, right? Out out in Indianapolis. Or I think you've been out to Indiana and up in Indianapolis and other places too, right? Just kind of wherever is available. Yeah, I mean, last year I got to go to Charlotte for Heroes Con, which is a big, uh, which is a big, really comic focused one. Mm -hmm. um, we did, and that's where I met Jamie Cosley. Uh, of course, we have you know C two E two, and we have Fan yeah. Expo, which has been around. Um, let's see, Nashville, the ICCC, um, had a huge toy convention, but they had. Um, I got to go. I had, had press credentials for that. Uh, Huntsville. Uh, Comic Con, which actually was just in Huntsville, Alabama, just this last weekend. So, yeah, not to be show. confused with Huntsville, Texas, which exactly. is where the prison is at. Yeah, but um, yeah, and it's nice because the swag packs, um, a lot of times they let me see here. You know, you get meetups and you get to meet uh, some you know a bunch of folks. So when you have like you know meetups and things like that, you can. Um, it's a nice way to kind of like immortalize yeah, uh, just really moments is. and things like that. And so, of course, um, the ones that were in the green one oh, check uh, out had a lot of the celebration Anaheim ones on it, uh, right. which was which was a gas. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's a great way to kind of immortalize things. And that way, if you're doing like a business card, it's like. Have a little fun with it. 
So well, and and so many of us that grew up, if anybody played sports or or did sports cards, like we were talking about at the top of the show, you know, baseball, basketball, you know, football cards, whatever it might be, everybody's everybody's dream is to always end up like on the cover of a magazine or on the cover Mm -hmm. or on a on the front of a baseball card, right? And to have it, you know, doing something you enjoy doing or that you love doing or that's a hobby or whatever it might be is just a icing on the cake. So it's really cool that you do that. And okay. like you said, it really is immortalizing. Wow, look at that card. Ah, oh, it's nice. Super laser blast. Defeat all units. That's super laser. That's an eight card. So that that's that's one you kind of, you know, these are what they call like having like bombs in your deck where it's like, all right, we're going to bring out and I've got enough resources to do it. Um, that's a legendary too. So I don't yeah. know what that goes for, but. Yeah, I'm looking it up because that one was actually highlighted on a on a website I was on that's earlier foil. today. Yeah, I'm looking it up. One moment, please. One moment, please. Stand by. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see. It's about twenty five dollars. All right. Ooh, nice. Yeah. One nice thing that I was doing on these, like, whereas back in the day, um, if you had, like, when I first started doing them, I was reusing like the, the artwork that was on the back of the old cards, and then I started to, uh, starting last year, kind of doing uh, my own artwork on this. So we have movie moments from this. So very cool. Just flipping through indiscriminately. Yep. Don't even legendary, care legendary, 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 legendary. Foil, foil, foil. I'm just looking Sa- for uh, hyperspace and uh, Sabine, shiny. Sabine, Sabine. Yeah, have you got any Sabines? Go fish. I don't even care if the audience can see these anymore. I'm just flipping through them. A whole deck full of off world Jawas and I have a lot of ISB Jawas agents. for some reason. Well, Albert, like I said, is we're the best TV show on radio. That's true. Yeah. Undisputed. All right. So, Greg, are you are you a light side or are you a dark side kind of guy? Which one is it? Light side. I know side. which one I would. Yeah, you're definitely light side. Light you're side. so so good hearted and everything else. Very cool. All right. Were there any questions I missed that you'd like to go back to? I, I, I did skip over some like favorite Mandalorian. You have a favorite Mandalorian? Oh, the armor. The armor. I loved. I loved that character. I loved the kind of the you know, the pure of like just following the creed or at least the creed of, you know, that sect of the Mandalorians. Um, you know, a, a question that I, I like that you put in there is like um, favorite comic book story or arc. Yeah. And and it reminded me uh, one of my favorite ones um, when I was younger was in the Marvel classic, uh, the wheel. And this is like issues basically 18 to 23 where, you know, they're all on this big, it looks like the, What's the um, the base in the High Republic books? What the Charlie kind of, Beacon? Yeah, so it's like it's basically like a casino, and they're all having all these adventures on it. And at one point, um, Han Solo and Chewbacca uh, get pulled into this sort of duel where it's like they have all these all these folks are in space, all these characters are in space, and they got their masks and stuff, and they have to basically they're armed with a blaster and a small shield, and they kind of have to fight till like there's basically one left. So it kind of pits them up and a great cover on there. But um, it was just kind of fun because it was like this, you know, kind of like the after the first six issues of the Marvel classic run where you get like now you've got like the, you know, the eight against the world, right? Where they're doing like that classic classic Western trope where you've got all the different characters. You've got Jax, the rabbit, which nobody likes except me. Um, you know, you've got the bounty hunters. You got the kid. And the Kevin robot. Scott. Sorry. Yeah. And Kevin Scott. Um, but I, I just like some of those classic arcs. Um, talked about the, um, was it the Lumira character that was Shire Bree? Um, she's in a great, you know, that, um, Walt Simonson and, uh, Louise Simonson, you know, they, they were working on that magazine and like, you know, like the, the numbers like sixties and seventies and the artworks were fantastic and the stories were great. And so there was a lot of great, um, a lot of that great classic one. And you can pick them up as like compendiums now, you know, mm. and. And uh, I think some of them are, it's, it's really fun because you see there was one even, you know, titled the last Jedi, right? I think it was right. like number 48 or something like that. And then there's a Boba Fett story in there. And so, you know, it seems like a, a simpler time when there wasn't a lot of legends yet. Um, but you know, you had these people that had a lot of free reign, a lot, a lot until Lucasfilm was like, Lucas was like, all right, all right, no yep. more green rabbits. Uh, and things I like love that. that last Jedi cover from the Marvel mm-hmm. series, by the way, that cover is really cool. The way it's framed the purple background. By the way, this is the last box. So. <laughs> he swears. He swears. Nope. <laughs> Good Lord, another box. I know this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> and I'm just blitzing through cards now, man. Like, If you have stayed through the entire feed, you will get enough of dupes to build a de- your own deck. 
Well, that was kind of the idea, right? And Albert said it, I think, earlier on, too. Was the idea is to get enough boxes where he'd actually be able to build a complete set. Now, I don't know if, Albert, you had a plan of, on what quality card you would actually build the set for. Or you just wanted one of every all 250 it was cards. It literally one of every 250 cards. That's all I was trying to go for. So it doesn't Which, matter if it's a, a normie uh, or if it's a, a legendary or a, not a legendary or a hyperspace or a foil, just no. as long as you had one of each. Yeah. Was, I mean, it's, it's just kind of like swag, right? And so therefore you cannot get rid of the Boba Fett. Oh, no, you do have a Boba Fett. Uh, right he's got Boba many Fett. Boba Fetts that he can, uh, he can okay. get rid of. But, you know, like I said, in some of this where you're going to need, like, um, you can have two or three of a card, you know, first what he'll do is he'll take out all, like, the ones that look shiny, set them aside, and then once again, you can you can start by organizing them by color, and then you can kind of go, you know, leaders and units, and then when you start seeing, like, two or three, you could start to kind of build that, you know, that base and that leader combination of what aspects you want. You may want three different aspects so you can have different types of cards, and then that'll start to kind of put together. And yeah, he's got more than enough to to build a number of decks, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that that'd be fun. And like I said, there's nothing more relaxing than a good card sort. <laughs> well, after after Until I pick you up start this building trash, a deck, yeah, after I pick up the trash, then I'll get into. Oh, that was Saturday go. morning. I was doing. I was kind of doing this Saturday go. morning where I was trying to build. Oh man, there you go. There's a non-foil version. Hyperspace blue. Very nice. Top loaded. Nope, right there on the floor. At least I wouldn't have land, land in the trash this time. <sighs> have you learned nothing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's a, here's another hyperspace. I don't have that one yet. Chewbacca. Hear you nothing that I say. I think we're down to like uh, 20 packs left, guys. So <laughs> hang in there. Over, over time at this point. There's that one. I don't. I don't think I got that one in a foil. Maybe I do. It's all. I like those mining guild ties. Go. Oh, oh yeah, you know what, Jonesy? Um, oh, look at that. Ooh, I don't like this guy. Is that a legendary? Uh, that is a rare. A rare. Yeah. So Boba, that Boba Fett uh, hyperspace Albert. Mm -hmm. Ten cents. <laughs> oh, sorry. Twenty-five cents plus. There you go. Hey, don't you take those nickels away from me? Yeah. Well, and someone's going to charge a dollar twenty-five to ship it. So ship it. Yeah. <laughs> Pump it in an envelope. There's another one I don't have. I'm really hoping you get fi uh, Fett's uh, fire spray. Oh, what does that go for? Uh, the hyperspace version goes for about eighteen to twenty. But it just looks cool. It would look great in a foil if you could, you know, if you could pull that. I'll see what I can do. I know, right? If you you got to skill up, you got to you got to. Get that XP rolling. Mm, that's nice. I don't think I've seen you pull that one yet. No. Well, I think I pulled the non hyperspace version of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Just uh, more trash it, cards. You know, another question you put on the list, Jonesy uh, and Albert, I, I liked is when uh, you had favorite force sensitive. Mm. And I was, I put cheer it. Because I do think, you know, like much like Almost. Omega, I think where he had kind of just enough. I mean, you kind of put that with, with through that faith in there. And I thought that, you know, it kind of, it kind of like broadened your thinking of what, you know, he's no Jedi. But I think when you're around, you know, are, you're around a temple like that and you are around Kyber that I think you kind of become sort of sensitive to it. And you can kind of like maybe just tune in just just enough. Yeah, um, I think he's I, I, alluded to as much during the movie uh, when he was talking to Jen and he could sense something was going on. I think he mm -hmm. did the same thing with Cassie in there when they were in the prison cell. And sure, it has like eight lines in the whole film. But I mean, <laughs> it just just su such a, a great character. It's a good one. He's a he's a favorite of a lot of people. I mean, and we we kind of what's odd is we've started to kind of forget about Rogue One a little bit. Especially, and oddly enough, I think with Andor, it's overshadowed Rogue One, I think, in mm. many ways. But it's, it's such a good character. I think one, especially if you're looking for one that is, you know, pure of faith and just has a, a complete comfort about where they're at in their lives and what their purpose is. And it, it, it's kind of cool to see characters like that and all this the crazy stuff going around. And of course, I'm with you. I think he's definitely force sensitive. I don't think that was any, any kind of question. I think mm -hmm. the book more or less confirmed some of that stuff too. And, uh, but yeah. Great, uh, great character. So I had that one. I don't, look at this one. Uh, this Ooh, is a new one. Don't, don't get caught. That's a rare. 
But look at this one here. This one's cool. Darth Vader. Oh, there you go. Ooh, there's your Darth Vader card. There's your Darth Vader leader card. No, that's the unit card. It's a ground. Yeah, oh, it's the ground, ground card. card? So it's a, oh. Yeah, it's a rare. That's a legendary though. So you yeah, could have you could you could have in theory you could have that card and the Darth Vader leader card. So yeah. that card in a normal hour this one is around a hundred dollars. Ooh. I just threw it behind my back. Did you see that? <sighs> yeah, you just shoved it in your back pocket. Put it in the spokes of your uh bicycle. Oh, now the corners are rounded. Yep. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Knocked off. Throw in the throw in the discard pin. Nice. It's a oh, oh it's nice. Yeah. It's a hundred bucks. Yeah, Dante confirm. Yeah, it's about a hundred bucks. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm blind. That's funny. <laughs> Stephanie asked, like, a uh, favorite ship, and I had that. It's the ghost any day of the week. Yep. Yeah, you're Same talking here. Albert's love language. You get a, yep. you get two ships for the price of one. My favorite is whatever Pelimoto's hands have been on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think a Jawa qualifies as a ship. How many packs <laughs> do you have left to rip? It's a vessel. Uh, it's a vessel. Oh, no. I don't know. Maybe, like, <laughs> less, like, more than four. Bale and Skull, no. <laughs> more than four. Less than 20, but a little more than four. A little more than four. That's Sabine Wren a foil. Is she a legendary? No, nope, she's just uncommon. Okay. I don't it, think it's I have some, that's a, No, that's, that's a unit card. card. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a unit card. I got some pretty good units. I'm pretty happy. Oh, I got Han Solo as a unit card, too. Nice. I'm not sure what Stephanie's. No, who, not which. Oh, who is your favorite? Oh, ship, like relationship. She didn't put ship in quotes, and Lauren's not oh, here, to, Lauren's not here to translate for me, so Lauren I don't get some of these references. Mando and Omera is Dante's favorite uh, ship. Ah, oh, favorite ship. Well, I'm glad he's uh, with me because Lauren fights me on that one all the time. Yeah, because it's not happening. It's Bo-Katan oh, and Mando. Right, you do too. Heron and Can Hera and Kanan. Well, it's but the ships are the ones who are maybe not confirmed to be relationships, mm. I guess. Or theoretical, or it's should be. Mm. That's a popular card too for Ooh. decks. Cunning. What does that go for? Anybody want to know? Everybody want to look it up? I'm checking it out. Easy to pull some Luke Skywalker though. You can get on that. Hasn't Just pulled a it. Luke leader card, has he? No, he has not. Probably because they're in the starter decks. You're not going to see them in the. Maybe you don't see them in the boosters. Uh, so cunning is about twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. There we go, Tim. Uh, Tim's coming through. Lando and L three. Ooh, that's strong. Computer love. It works. And lady song. Oh, that almost looked like Hondo. Yeah, no Hondo in this deck. Not yet. <sighs> All right, what do we got here? Make an opening. There you go. That's a common card. Looks cool, though. Yeah, it looks cool. That's a crap card. Hey, look at that. Boba Fett's Fire Spray. There, hey, you, there go. you go. Nicely done. That's a That's rare. a penny. A penny? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great pull, though. Great just pull, kid. That are more? If you were to cosplay a character, who would it be? Well, that's easy. I have Matt the Radar Technician. I, I have the cosplay outfit. It was my COVID project. Oh, that's cool. Albert, yeah. who would it be? Exactly, exactly. There's um Maz Kanata. No. Right. And why would it be Pelimoto? Why, why would it be Pelimoto? <laughs> why would it be Pelimoto? I don't mm. think I have this one yet. Ooh, the Shimano. There's a rare card. Another wedge and Tilly's. That's the second one I've gotten tonight. I don't know, man. I don't think. I don't think. The, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to pull another um... Sabine. Well, I'll pull another Sabine for sure, but uh, I don't think I'm going to pull another. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be, it'd be nice to maybe see a maybe get a little lucky in here and get another leader card. That you're going to get one of the fancy foils for hyper. Not for lack of yeah. packs. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, an Imperial Inferno Four. Oh, Inferno Ooh, okay. Four. Cool. See, we're still picking some unique ones here. Yeah. I mean, I haven't got that one that I remember. Uh, Tim is answering your question, Steph. Max, Max Rebo. Rebo. Who survived, by the way. Yeah, he always survives. I'd probably be a stormtrooper. I always just wanted to be a stormtrooper. I had started a long time ago of Building pursuing, looking at doing the TK, but 
did not uh, did not follow through with that because back then they were exceptionally expensive. They're a little more affordable now, but they take a lot of space. Oh yeah, those kits, those kit uh, containers. Here's base another window base. ground unit. Yeah, and they're legendary. Mine's Andor, not to uh, stereotype, but um, yeah, I think I'd go with Andor. Andor has better facial hair though. That's mm-hmm. true. He does have better, a lot of things. <laughs> I feel bad, man. I'm sorry. Ageless. Ageless. Uh, so that was that was a, a normal card, right, Albert? That was uh, the yeah, border. no foil or anything. Nope. All right, still about $16, though. Not That's too bad. Good. Yeah. I'm starting to see a trend that these legendary cards are worth There's the another Mace Windu called uh, Party Crasher, which is... <laughs> yeah, a, he pulled... He, he, I remember seeing that in the... Uh, uh, That's a fun one. I think I'm down to... S- Four packs, man. Four packs left. Four packs. Four packs. All skate. All skate. Wait a minute. How many boxes? Did you go through all the boxes? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's... He did one on his own. He cheated. Well, I had seven boxes total. I did six on the air tonight. Mm, there you go. So. You got blisters on your hands? You got any paper cuts? No. The The, the most dangerous part of the show was earlier when I had the knife, the big... Uh, Serrated knife, and I was opening up the shrink wrap. No, I thought it was it's a show based in Texas. I would expect you to have. I have several knives, sir. Several knives of different sizes. Hmm. Yeah, crap, <laughs> crap, crap, more crap. I don't even know what any of these cards are now. Like, uh, <laughs> they all look alike after a while. They all look alike, really? to be honest. Yeah, nothing special in there. All right, two packs. Oh, Stephanie voted Cobb Vance for me. Ooh, okay. I would accept that. Who is your favorite droid? Oh, look, this is good. Look at that. I got a hyperspace turret. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah That's a leader card. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, crap. Crap. Boy, that would be tough. As much as I like Chopper, I do I do like I liked L3. Um, mm. I liked I liked L3 as a droid. Chopper's mm. my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I still probably have to go. I don't know. R two is always oh, last pack. It? Last pack. This is all right. Everybody, let's brace ourselves for some epic. Or you could sell it for twenty bucks sealed. <laughs> well, <laughs> do they sell for twenty bucks sealed? Nope, got nothing. Got a regular. So you went from a dollar cheer card to a five cent cheer card. <laughs> We're, we're going the wrong direction here. <laughs> yeah, this uh, ended with a dud. Yeah, wow, that's it. Wah, wah. Oh, cool. Well, all right, so for the next hour, I'm now going to go through the cards and look and read which are the legendaries. <laughs> I'm going to read all of them. <laughs> read the description. <laughs> right. yeah. In hour number four, our intrepid heroes. <laughs> I think that was written in my contract for tonight. It's like, yes. First two hours will be. Boy, uh, yeah. You got quite the stack there, Albert. So I don't know if you got a complete deck, but um, you you probably did better than 75, 80% of it. You're playing with many decks. Well, from a, a set, at least. Yeah, but yeah, you got a bunch of decks you can build there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't, I'll don't. i show you the, the full. Oh, wow. You know, that's what we like to see. Yeah, that's wow, a good that's looking. A Dang. That's... I got to go through all these now. That's what it looks like at the local card shop. That's all. How, how many cards is he rolling over with his chair? <laughs> Legendary just, hollow just foil. Import, yeah, just the important ones that he doesn't care about. I'll take a picture of this and all the trash that's down here. Right. I'll get rid of the McDonald's boxes. But well, there you go. That was it. Um, thank you. I mean, that was fun. I mean, it's that was tiring. I'm, I'm, I really <laughs> will never do that again. But that was a lot of fun, <laughs> especially talking <laughs> talking to Greg and talking Star Wars. Now this was, I mean, you know, I, I've done, you know, a, a break here or there. Um, and, but it's, I think it's more fun when you have like a group of folks and, and with this, you know, since it's a new game, it's easier for, you know, folks who, you know, cause I think it's the same thing if you, when you guys talk about like, let's say we're talking about, you know, Jedi Fallen Order or Jedi Survivor, where you have a lot of casual folks who are interested, but you know, the games in some cases, like for me, I kill off Cal Kestis left and right. So it's like you can't make a game like that that's, you know, that's simple enough. I have to bring my son in to finish some things. But like this, you know, you could 
I think there's enough here. And if you've played Pokemon or if you played a little magic or you played something along those lines, pick up a starter deck and you feel like, especially now you can, you're getting in on kind of the ground floor and everybody's trying to learn how to play it. Everybody. And so there's a little bit of excitement. So there's a nice window here before, you know, and uh, I would recommend checking it out and it doesn't, you know, it's not overly complicated. Um, yeah. You know, like I think it's as complicated as you want to make it and if you want to get in. But um, I think there's a nice window and there's, you know, it's summer's coming up uh, time to maybe check out your local local store and see who's playing or like, hey, if somebody wants to to get in a game and I just want to learn how to play. A lot of times people are just happy to teach you how to play and, you know, and just, hey, let's just do it. We're having fun. It's a night and you don't feel like you have to invest, you know, like it's not a campaign. Yeah, uh, where you have to play several nights. It's like maybe I want to go in and play and have some fun. And I remember doing that with Destiny, where they were having some you know events and and games, and you would get like a like a booster pack for playing X number of games that night or something like that. But it was kind of fun and it was a learning experience. And I think for the most part, you know, you'll find those folks who are like hyper competitive and they're in every game. It doesn't really matter. But you'll find some folks who are just happy to be out, happy to, you know uh, to to play and you know pick it up and see what you think. Yeah, yeah, if you're getting into it, be cautious about overpaying for anything. So if you see it on eBay or even when you look at it on Amazon, making sure you know, make sure you're paying something close to retail. You go to your local comic shop or your local card shop, rather, and you know, we sometimes use your comic shop as well. Talk to them about it. Get some of their feedback if they're going to get a new stock in, what their their current status mm -hmm. is. You know, So familiarize with yourself before you go out there and buy it, either for yourself or for somebody else. So just so you don't get taken advantage of while the game is still getting to scale. I think, and again, like like Greg was saying earlier, we got an expansion coming in July already. So this is going to be more, you'll find a little more readily here pretty soon if you're mm -hmm. not ready. And so uh, be be patient, but also find find yourself a crew you want to play with and you know do it with people you like and that you'll have fun with. Uh, sometimes the card shops are a little bit a little bit testy and people out there just trying to feel good about themselves, but find find a crew you like and have a good time and and try different decks and try different play styles. That's what makes some of these things really fun and just because it uh, the play style doesn't necessarily do well it could be really really fun so when you do win and you do it things do work out it, it's all the more enjoyable and it's something that you like playing don't let other people yeah. pressure you into playing the top decks and things like that 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 force you to go and start buying special cards do what you like do what you want to play and and have fun doing it yeah and there's also a lot of youtube videos on i think there was one that uh, FFG and and uh, somebody there's a YouTuber who does a lot of different games and uh, it's going to be one, like one of the top hits if you put in Star Wars Unlimited in YouTube and I kind of watch that a couple three times and every time I go through it and I have my cards in front of me it starts to kind of click a little more and you go oh okay yeah. and you kind of pick up these things and you know a couple times through I was like oh okay now these cards that I have because right now I mean, I was in the, I was in a place where Albert wasn't like, I have all these cards. I have no idea what they mean. And once you kind of start sorting them and looking through them and then you kind of go through like, oh, OK, and you can kind of see that and you go, oh, OK, I can I, I can put this together. And um, my nine year old will talk you off about it. So there you go. If you, if you need a lifeline, Greg, uh, we have a nine year old expert that can play the game and give you advice on what to do. And if you were looking Perfect. for what to play on the next turn. So we've got some. We've got some uh, we've got some experts in the wings waiting to provide that guidance that we so dearly require. And we'll clean your clock when it comes to this. I've had <laughs> yeah, I've had it happen in Destiny. I like I playing with our kids, man. They're they're re they're relentless. They're ruthless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All they have is time, so <laughs> they can absorb that just like like yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, let's. What? Yeah. So, thank you guys, honestly, for bearing through all of this. Uh, this was a fun experience, quite honestly, and. Uh, you know, I've got it. I think I think I have enough cards here to actually put something together and play. And uh, maybe I'll come back and report on how that goes. I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. But um, do yeah, some no. posts on 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 the decks that you've built, like what you like put it on Instagram or yeah. something where you go, hey, this is what I put. Or if you get a chance to play um, like, hey, I went in with this deck right here and either had success or you know, got my clock clean. And I think like once you play a couple of times, you'll start to see like, oh, that's what that card does. Or mm -hmm. I should have used this. And, you know, one thing nice about having as many cards as you have, um, you have enough that you can sell off some of those, recoup your funds, but you also have some really nice ones that, you know, like maybe those, some of those foils weren't necessarily, um, you know, worth a lot on the market, but they kind of make your deck look nice. 
and you can kind of like, Ooh, that that's nice, but I like that variant of it. Right. And right. then you, you know, you get some sleeves and stuff. And so there's some really nice accessories for it. Uh, you can go to town on it, but I would say you can get in for just get the base set if, if you want and be in for 30 bucks. I was looking more to kind of build some decks, just, just kind of like, kind of like what I would do normally. Like I would just build a set. And so I'll take this, you know, I'll, I'll take one that's technically legal and I'll start to trim it in, you know, hone it in with more base cards and, you know, picking them up secondary market and it comes really cheap, but it's kind of fun because it's more of something I like doing where I'm just kind of building it and hopefully I get a chance to play it. But otherwise, you know, I don't, what I don't want is like having a, you know, a, a locker full of this. Um, I'd really like to, you know, like build and then play. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, I think I will follow your lead on that one. So, um, yeah, so I think from what I'll end up doing is I'm going to sell this card tonight and uh, probably use the money that I make off of this to buy the next set uh, is kind of what my strategy is. So I plan on doing this again. I will probably buy another probably six boxes at least, I would think. Seven seems like too many. Uh, but yeah, maybe six. <laughs> I like that. That's where the limits are. <laughs> six, but definitely not seven. Six, not seven. That's seven, seven is so absurd. There's a line. He, he's we've established a line. I love yeah. it. No I'll believe it when that. I see it. But yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. Jonesy knows me well. I'll probably throw some more uh, money that way. But but uh, if you can get a box for like you know like the I think the box of boosters when they went at at market price was like ninety nine. And, you know, as someone who has bought hobby boxes for, you know, 120, 150, I mean, that's not terrible. Mm. And you do have a chance to pull something nice um, and then have enough in there, especially like with the next go around to go, all right, I can get a starter. I can get a starter box of, you know, at Shadows of, of the Galaxy or like that and have something that I can customize and maybe a couple of cards I can throw back on the market and make some money back. Or like you said, pay for your hobby, pay for that next right. box. So I don't feel like I'm, you know, like, uh, Oh, sorry, kiddo. My, my second oldest now doesn't get to go to college. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next, awesome. Better luck next time, kid. Yeah. Sorry, kid. Not, not a good pull. Hey, Greg, thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you on, uh, you. especially going, putting you through the force lightning round questions. That was a lot of fun to hear your answers. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thanks so much. For everything you do. You want to, uh, plug your show? Where can they find you? If uh, people want to learn more about uh, rural base card. Well, thank you. Um, it, we started on the Instagram. That's usually where I do the most. Um, so at Rebel Base Card. Um, although I am on uh, Twitter X um, tr with, uh, let's see, on Blue Sky, <laughs> uh, sometimes Substack, sometimes Hive, uh, on Facebook as well, because a lot of times I cross post from uh, Instagram to Facebook. Instagram. Uh, or you can find the podcast where you find, you know, App Apple Podcast or Spotify or where you find, you can even tell Alexa to who play the rebel base card podcast and she'll probably play it and, uh the latest e episode yeah and what do you got coming up next if you don't mind have you guys thought out what your next episode is coming up what, what can you preview so we are still doing the uh, the bad match and we'll be taking that greg uh greg cass and you know we usually bring in a guest or two uh to to round that out i know we'll be doing the acolyte um now on the and that that's like a, we call that sort of like an insert uh podcast where mm -hmm. the, the base show um, I know that we did a the, the Chicago Sports Spectacular, which was a card show here uh, back in March. I've got some sound from that. Uh, C2E2 will be a show that I'll be doing uh, right before vacation uh, where I'll be going down there. And uh, there's a couple of artists down there that I know. Um, Daniel Guevara is down there. Um, and there'll be an artist alley. And so I'll do a show from there. I think I've got some new remote gear that I've been itching to kind of try out. Um, so, and, you know, C2E2 is always good for, you know, like there's a lot of guests uh, there's a lot of people that I know that it's, it's a meeting place. That's what conventions are. So I'll get a chance to uh, do a show from that. And then, um, coming up because it's the 25th anniversary of the Phantom Menace, um, much like some of the other shows we've done where we've done, you know, like 40 years of return of the Jedi cards or the 25th, um, of galaxy uh, or 30 years oh. of galaxy. We'll be doing 25 years of Phantom Menace cards. Um, I think I'm going to pull in uh, a good friend of mine who, um, like some of the Phantom Menace cards, and we'll talk about the releases that happened and some of the you know releases that happened after that. So nice, nice. Um, those are always kind of fun to kind of deep dive into those, and so those are probably some of the ones that are coming off the top of my head. So a lot of good you know, content. You should do a uh, Young Jedi uh, card game. I heard that was a huge. <laughs> you know, I have I have some of those somewhere. Um, like anything else, it's hard to get. I get rid of them. I think they're in with my decipher. Uh, CCG cards, but yeah, I remember oh. picking up the uh, starter starter packs for that, and I did. That's about where it, and it ended. So I think I've got you know a 
couple of those. If I find it, I'll I'll uh, I'll post. <laughs> post tag, a please tag, tag me. Tag, please tag, tag me in that one as well. But uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. Glad to hear you guys are uh, certainly staying busy. You got a lot. There's always plenty of Star Wars content for all of us to continue to talk about. So thanks again for for being here, man. Well, thank you. Uh, and then for us, uh, what do we got this week? So we got the Bad Batch coming up. Right. Uh, we got, what, three episodes left in the season? Is that right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so we'll be mm -hmm. back on Thursday night to do that. Uh, and then Sunday we'll be back to do the Way Station. We'll have a Patreon show. And uh, we're going to start rolling into our 25th anniversary celebration of The Phantom Menace. And uh, I guess it's okay. We, we don't have, we'll do a more formal announcement here very soon. But we will be doing a live show at May the 4th Be With You All, which mm -hmm. is the annual charity event that's held here by Silver Lake Creative in Austin. That'll be on May 4th. Uh, more details coming on that. But if you guys want to see us in person, you can swing by there uh, and uh, you know take a look. We've got some swag that we're going to bring by as well. But that's going to be a lot of fun. And all that goes to a good charity. So we'll, we'll provide more information, more links where you guys can donate and help the organization, help the guy, the good people there uh, at, at uh, May the 4th be with you all, which is I'm super stoked and looking forward to it. Jonesy, any final words before we get out of here? Anything else you want to add? Nope. Thanks for everyone to come out for the live stream. We had a really great showing. Thank you for all of the interaction, all the fantastic questions. Thanks for making it a fun night. We certainly appreciate it. And Greg, always a pleasure, my friend. Great to have you on the Thank show, finally. Now, this was amazing, and uh, it's been fun. You can, Like I said, it's to kind of start in my journey uh, with the Cantina cast, and uh, it, it, you guys have been a great uh, podcast to listen to. I listen you know, you know, just as much Thank as you. I talk about it. And uh, just all the success. And I'm glad you guys keep forging forward because uh, you're one of the best out there. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. It's very kind of you, sir. Appreciate that. All right, guys. We'll see you, uh, see you guys here in just a few days. still listening wow that's amazing well i'm here to give you the disclaimer normally we do a big long drawn out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff but i think you guys kind of know that lucasfilm and disney have uh no affiliation with us at all uh and we have none with them uh we talk about star wars which is their property and all that other good fun stuff uh but i think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff if you can't well then send a lawyer to send an email to me and i'll be glad to chat with them other than that you know what's what so that's your disclaimer 